Bosco smells. <laughs> hello, chat. Uh, hello, hello, chat. Hello. We weren't even live, and, and you guys had a level three hype train. Yeah, what or the level hell? Level two hype train, rather. It's it's because Arkov and I were hyping them up the whole time. Uh, Having a party without our permission, it seems. Ooh, who did that one? That was a good one. You said you oh, said that everybody could. That was me during the stream, mm, not before the stream. I'd say good body, not very good projection. Ooh, slow seven. Ooh, Ooh. I'll take seven. I'll take a seven. I, I didn't realize that Sarah was like a fucking burp expert. The, the burp I mean, sewer. Yeah, you gotta. There's nothing more satisfying than a good belch. It's true. Do you ever get the one where you like open your neck and you can just feel the entire like. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? Like your neck just opens like a frog and like it's just air. There's no sound, but just the air just comes out. I like and it's the just ones like, that feel like you're expelling gas from your mouth. There's something I mean, very that's, satisfying about that. That's what all burps are, Sarah. But but you know what I mean? It's like a very <laughs> slow sort of. Yeah, yeah, like... that one. That one's good. I like those ones. <laughs> those ones are great. Because then, like, you don't startle, you know, your prey with your sounds. You you startle your you. prey? <laughs> yes, when I am hunting my prey, I still need to be able to belch, so I have to teach myself to ninja that shit. Exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're here. We're doing the Prince Division. Bosco, do you want to take over? I have to write something before we I was going to say, I, feel, I was just going to let you ride the train off the rails until you were done. No, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, That's not, fair. I'm not qualified for this. You, you said you had to write an intro? I have to write something. Nice. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Montague Blue on Twitter. I just posted a uh, miniature that I painted last night that I was really proud of. I did some, I, I tried out my airbrush for the first time. And I painted a really cool wood dragon, and I went a little crazy with the landscaping because, you know, as you do. Um, but you can also catch me tweeting random stuff about rhubarb and, and nonsense because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but if you're more interested in that, I am streaming. Uh, tomorrow, I may or may not stream. Uh, if I stream, it's going to be with my friend Darcy. We're going to be playing Little Nightmares 2, but I might not want to stream tomorrow. So just Are you like Schrodinger's cat of streaming? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, it depends. Like I haven't hung out with another human being inside of my home for a very long time. So I might want to, you know, spend the time interacting with another living person more so than focusing on streaming. So it depends on where I'm at. Um, but on uh, Thursday, you can catch me playing Ocarina of Time, where I am a horrible trash goblin. And like, I don't know what it is about playing Legend of Zelda that just turns me into a weird, like, witch in the woods but like something primal comes out of me when i play that video game and i do not know what it is um we had a lot of fun running around i'm an adult now that's cool um and we gotta stop ganon dork from taking over the hyrule realm so that's that's all fun so definitely check that out it's been great um it's been a, it's honestly been probably one of the best streams i've had in a really really long time so come check it out we're playing the whole series okay that's it bosco oh. what was that i said arkov Hmm. You're up. Uh, okay. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Edward Bosco. Every you're still Friday smiling. Friday you're night still night. smiling. Fuck I off. I can't help it. <laughs> you were like, you were trying. You're like, if I just tiptoe through the words, I won't hear the smile. <laughs> I can't help it. I try. I know, it's, but I like how you're creative about how you try. Like, I'll speed <sighs> through it. I'll slow down. Yeah, Sorry, keep, keep plugging yourself, slash, Bosco. Twitch.tv forward slash Edward Bosco, where every Friday we have Friday Night Flashbang, long-form storytelling with characters from the community. I had an amazing show last night as well. Also, I do believe that I, Edward Bosco, either did or am doing another signing soon. I don't know. Why don't you tell me, Bosco? What would you Asshole. do, Bosco? What would you do if someone sent you in like a permission slip and asked you to sign it with your like your autograph? What do you mean? Edward's gonna go to the museum. Wait, what? Like, do you, wait, like, like what if some what if some student just sent you like their permission <laughs> slip to go on like the sports like field trip to like you know the local the local like um, historical you know tourist spot, uh -huh. and they send that to you and you have to sign it and send that back. I would You'd call be the accomplice. police. Because, no, I would, I would want to call the police because I don't know how the hell they got my address. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That's actually a good point. 
Ah, yes, here we go. I, Edward Bosco, will be signing more things live tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch. There's a good job, Bosco. Use your Twitter. Anything else you'd like to plug? Because you're forgetting a couple things, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that it? All right, cool. Uh, Sarah, you're up. Hi. Meh. I'm on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with me, Willia. Um, don't do much Twitch wise besides this. I've been very, very busy. <laughs> I gotta just eat, sleep, and work and oh. trying to still arrange the house. Um, there's a new episode of Hello Kitty Super Cute Adventures on YouTube. It's adorable. Oh. I need to watch that still. It's pretty cute oh, stuff. But, um, yeah. That's about all I got. All right. <laughs> I like Sarah uh, a lot because she's not a streamer. So she's not like, I'm streaming these 50 things. She's like, I'm Sarah. I'm Hello Kitty. And it's just like, damn, girl. Like, it's just like... like I don't have the Drop equipment the to stream. I have a crap notebook MacBook Pro that can barely handle any of the new games. We'll get you uh, there. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Arkov and on Twitter at Arkov, where tomorrow is the murder cave. Come check out myself, Grizzly Adams, Shadow Dancer Bob, and Codename Chaz as we play the Vigi games as a group. Uh, you can also find me playing through Halo 4 mm -hmm. currently with Colonel Sheru, where we have been doing lots of goofy things while also trying to power through all of the different Halos. And when I say power through, that's because we are on Halo 4. And if you know anything about me, you know how much I hate Halo 4 and anything that can explode in a Halo game. Because I'm not great at them. Which is okay. I do my best. But that's okay. Bosco likes to carry me through those levels when I keep getting blown up. That being said, you should also come by and just drop me lots of love and support, either vocally or through text, or through bits and subs, because I love to hear how much people appreciate the content that I put out and how entertaining and lovely my voice is. So definitely come by twitch.tv slash Arkov. Shower me with praise both monetarily and with your lovely words. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourself first, and then come say hi. I can't that, argue the Halo thing. I'm going to argue that second part. What, about being wonderful and amazing and talented and people loving you? It's not really Take much care of, a of yourselves first and foremost. Always. Yeah, I said that. I said I Arkov said that. Anyway, let's throw it over to our Schiller extraordinaire, Connor McKinley, aka Distortion Devil. What you got going on, Connor? Hi, diddly ho, Chatterinos. Uh, it's me, your boy, uh, Distortion Devil. I am <laughs> cold and hungover. Uh, so let's do this. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil, where I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, Tuesday is uh, Warhammer Tabletop Day, uh, where me and my buddy Luke are playing uh, Warhammer uh, 40k 9th edition uh, now. We've, we have 500-point armies that we play on the tabletop. We just had our first game last week. Uh, not last week, earlier this week. It was his Death Guard versus my Adeptus Custodes, and I just barely managed to eke out a win there at the very end, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and next week, it's probably going to be either Emperor's Children or Imperial Guard. We'll have to see. Um, Friday is Friday Funhouse, where I play a bunch of fun party games with my friends. Saturday is uh, Yakuza. You saw me playing that earlier playing through Yakuza Kiwami 2 where uh, we took Majima out on a nice karaoke date and and yes. he sang a uh no he sang a very sad song and got very nostalgic and it was it was really really sad Aww. uh and then we sang like a butterfly with Aika chan and and she killed it and here you put on his wrapping glasses and uh that was just a whole a whole thing that happened hippity hoppity those panties are not your property um yeah, that's another thing that happened in the game. Anyway, um, Sunday I'm playing either Half-Life Alex or playing games with the Harbingers, the community over at Dead House Sonata. And if you haven't heard of Dead House Sonata by now, where have you been for like a better part of a year? Uh, check out that link and you'll find everything you need to know about Dead House Sonata right there. Uh, you can also purchase a Founders Pack and some of that money gets thrown back to me. Also, be sure to check out my DMs Guild, uh, where I've got a couple of 5th edition subclasses out. 
Um, and one on the way as well. Uh, the Passion Domain Cleric. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, did we get to everybody else? We sure did, but uh, why don't you talk about our sponsor, Die Hard Dice? Yeah, I was just about to just about to get on to that if we got everybody out of the way. Uh, this episode of the Prince Division was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice, if you enjoy rolling dice uh, that have that executive hefty feel to it, then Die Hard Dice is for you. They also have all of these wonderful carrying cases and dice trays as well, so you can protect your dice and your rolling surfaces in one fell swoop. They are compact. They are awesome to feel. Nice, felty uh, bottom. And also... Um, I keep, I keep, I keep telling about this, but, uh, they are made of non-toxic materials. So if you are worried about perhaps maybe little ones, uh, coming in and, and, and popping your colorful dice into their mouths, then you don't need to worry. Uh, but okay. you shouldn't eat them. Do you guys want to, yeah, don't eat them. Even, even if diehard dice post pictures of their dice in beans, which is sacrilege, <laughs> um, <laughs> That is the personal opinion of Monty Glue and not of the Unexpectables. That is my personal opinion. But, I mean, first of all, their dice trays are uh, just like... L listen to this. Just listen to this. Oh, yeah. Ah. That that's, is the sound that's, of... That's, that's the sound of diehard dice uh, hitting hitting the inside of a diehard dice-branded rolling tray. A, do you want to hear a giant Dracona dice hitting the dice tray? You ready for this, Let's chat? do it. Yeah. Nice. That's some heft right there. Yes. And if you go to dieharddice.com, you can get any and all of these products. And if you put in the affiliate code, expect Feb, then you can get a whopping 10% off your order price. They have some really, really nice sets. Their Draconda sets are... And they have, they have multi-class too, which is really cool. I want to get multi-class. Yeah! Now. Yeah, be sure to check them out. Do it, Monty. How you doing? Uh, I need some more time. So you want to read out some bits and subs? I was going to say, I got some bits and subs to read out then. Let's go up and down the list. Hopefully this doesn't screw me up like it has so many Wednesdays for Kurt. Uh, let's see. We're going to start with... Uh, we've got Fantastic Calum. What up, dude? Tier 1 subscription, 10 months in a row. Almost a full year of D&D &D fun. Thank you all so much for reigniting my love for D&D &D with all the fun. We've got Gamaliel with a Tier 1 sub. Bosco Smells. That's rude. Sergeant Tucker with a tier one sub. Do the thing. What's the thing? It's the thing. Ask Sarah. She knows what the thing is. Sarah, what's the thing? Um. Wait, who was this? What was this? Sergeant Tucker says you know what the thing is. What's the thing? It, um, what is the thing? I don't know what the thing is. Sergeant Tucker, why would you lie to us? Read, read the whole thing the again. They said, do the thing. What's the thing? It's the thing. Ask Sarah. She knows what the so thing is. there's so many things. I know. They weren't specific. Tucker, there's multiple why? things that I do. Tucker, how could you? You're You've been demoted. You're apart. You've been demoted. You're now private, Tucker. Yeah. Because oh. you a dick. Uh, Sloth, 0130, with a tier one. So 11 months in a row. Ty of Nerdlandia with 10,000 bits. Hi, hope everyone is doing good. We've got Gudrun with a tier one sub for 12, or sorry, 11 months. Celebrating Valentine's with Death Guard Warhammer, Papa Nurgle, bless my single life. Ooh. I don't know if that's who you want blessing your single's life. Uh, Oathbreaker John with a tier two sub. Just one more month until that one year. Also, how can you stand this cold weather, Monty? People who lived in the north, I live in Texas, and it's colder than White Dragon's Ice Cave. Well, oh one thing that helps us is that our buildings, as well as our infrastructure, is based around the snow and weather. So we have that benefit to us. Um, keep bundled up. Um, also, do not sweat. That is a weird thing to say, but like, don't actually get yourself sweaty. Because if you're sweaty and you get yourself cold, that will make you even colder. So, you know, don't don't exert yourself too much when it's this cold. You know, this, yeah. is, this is when you become the lazy potato you have always dreamed of. Become so. like monkey. Also, if it's really cold, be sure to either wear some eye protection or just, you know, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, because you, you're, 
Keep your yeah, extremities don't. warm. Ears, nose, fingers. Those are the big three. So keep those nice and warm. Wear gloves. If it's if it's cold enough, your eyes can actually freeze. It's it true. It has to get really cold. That has to be like negative 30 plus. And if so it don't. does get that cold, remember to stay it still inside. Hurts. Watch, watch this live or on YouTube. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your also, friends. Stay inside safe. What? What? I can't. It was a good plug. It was a good transition. I got this. <laughs> All with a tier one sub saying, whoa, we've got a big piece pie with the tier one sub. We've got Nom Nom Goblin with a tier two sub. Yay, the net's been out here because of the blizzard all day, power held at least. But it came back in time for this. Uh, then Tanagi with a tier one sub. A Stellar Coyote with 100 bits the next morning. Gibby, gosh, that sure was a nice night of holding hands, Derziv. It sure <laughs> was, best buddy. And they <laughs> traded stamps the rest of the day. Too many fandoms with a tier one sub. Hey, it's one Uppington with a tier one sub, blind and belligerent, the receiver of that tier one sub. Viridian with her with a tier one sub for 11 months, just finished watching the VOD for the fair episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Pretty Venus with 100 bits. Got my diehard dice and fell in love with the quality of the metal dice. I want to get more when I fix my budget. Do it. Remember to use the promo code EXPECTFEB, unless it's in March, in which case, stay tuned. Nia and the Mantid with 100 bits. It's already Sunday where I am. So have some advanced Valentine bits. Eat chocolate. Smoosh faces with significant unders. Dance with pets. hoo -ah. I'm going to kiss Goblin. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Ragnarok with a tier one sub. Newt, newt. We got Kitty Cat Gundam with five bits. We got Er. Uh, the one time the cat's not here. The one time. <laughs> Erwin Elf with a thousand bits. Are we doing a nat one counter tonight? Honestly, after Wednesday, I'm not. I don't want to roll anything today. Remy rolled so many 20s. I have nothing left to give. Also, Connor was talking way mad shit on the Unexpectables. Gudrun with. 400 bits. If you have two lasagnas and put them on top of each other, you have one tall lasagna or still two lasagnas. John, I want some lasagna. <laughs> Ash, Ash with 5,310 bits, a very specific <laughs> number. Bits for the show and also to say that Arkov is definitely all the things Bosco said. Very lovely dragon man. Suck it, Arkov. You're a just, nice person. I kissed my cat. It's been achieved. <laughs> she crawled Yay. out of her bed and she was like, what? And I kissed her. She's like, okay. And then I put her back in the bed and she was like, okay. Uh, she might not meow. It's, 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 you know, it's pretty chilly. So she's kind of been yeah. sleeping. But. Uh, let's see. Burnout Vaughn with a tier one sub for 11 months saying, ah, I come in and Bosco is being a shit. Normally I'd take the piss out of him. But after tonight, he gets a pass for at least a month. He's also a good Paladin player. Also, make sure to check out the Citric King at twitch.tv slash the Citric King and at Citric King on Twitter. Oh, all right. Thanks, Burnout. Uh, Erwin <laughs> Elf with five tier one subs gifted to the community. Blackfoot Fair with elite bits and Bosco, Arkov, and Rabbit need to fuse into one super being at some point. I can no longer tell who is who. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, apparently we're all the same. Um, right. I'm good uh, to get started. So, yeah, I'm good. We only got a couple bits left. Good? I can read this. Yeah, break. if you want to read them out, then we yeah. can, we okay. can read them out now. Uh, uh, let's see. Real quick, we got Flustered Bum with 100 bits saying, I'm ready to solve crimes. Told my sister about the Prince Division. She looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? But it's okay because I have all the needs in chat and you guys. Thank you for the 100 bits. G-Force with a tier one sub. Hero Shepherd with 300 bits. Birthday tomorrow. Yes, B-Day. You were Happy born. birthday, Hero Shepherd. Uh, X Wiley Willie, I think a tier one sub to Daver Boy Constable Mutton. Thank you for the tier one sub for 11 months. Game Master Anth with 100 bits. I am in Minnesota. I have survived negative 30 Fahrenheit, and that's without the wind chill. Bring it on. Hero Shepherd with 200 bits. Tomorrow is my or will be my birthday on V Day. Well, happy early birthday, and maybe by the end of the night, a happy birthday on the day. And finally, running us out with 500 bits. The Bourbonator with 500 bits saying, we actually just hit negative 74 below in a town very near me last week. Stay the hell inside, please. That is yeah. that is ungodly cold. And that is all the bits and subs. Take it away, Monty. Okay. So, wow. How do I even recap last episode? 
When last we left our hero officers. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a passionate last... night of pants on hand holding. <laughs> yeah, right. Give me. traded so... stamps. Woo! Exactly. There you go. All right. So when last we left our officers, you guys enjoyed some downtime. You guys made your way to the Rampoon City Fair and Festival, a <laughs> massive carnival of roller coaster rides, gaudy love tunnels, fried foods, and all sorts of wonders. You guys went on a giant group, um, almost, I'd say, field trip to this event. Um, along with yourselves, you also had uh, Nefene, Tanis's daughter. You had Breeze Rot, the Black Dragon, who moved in across from uh, Kelzorin and also was involved with the previous case. Speaking of previous cases, you also had Costumire and Taryn there as well. Um, and uh, Amelia, who is uh, another person involved with other cases. Uh, you guys went on kind of a big group trip and you had a very good time. And also a not so great time as you guys had encountered a very close encounter with that of a tower, a mysterious creature to which you know of nothing about that seemed to be, you're not sure what it was doing there. And what makes you even more concerned is why Tannis's brother Jericho was within its company even more so. But you didn't let it get to you and as the tower and Jericho left you behind, you guys managed to bring up the mood with some more rides, eventually making your way home for the night, some in the company of others. Uh, and as you guys made your way home, uh, Gibby and Durzab had a very lovely evening of pants on hugging. I um, probably <laughs> Yeah. Um, there were interesting conversations that were had, and you all awaken the next morning. And we will start with Tannis. So, Tannis, you come out of your meditation in the morning. It was difficult to meditate. But you hear the sounds of songbirds outside of the window flying off into the general noise of the cityscape below. Connor? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, just want to make sure. I looked down at my phone. I've been holding it for a couple of minutes, just staring at it. I hover my finger over Jericho's name in my phone, but I never actually press it. You hear a door open and close. And you watch as Nefene rounds the corner. Morning, Dad. Morning, daughter. <laughs> she kind of gives you a look and laughs. Yesterday was so much fun. I'm glad you had a good time. I had a great time. You okay? You look tired. Oh, I'm fine. Roll deception check. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, kid. Her. A seven. Also, Monty, make sure you click back into the game real quick. I did. I did. Sweet. Thursday's coming back to bite you already. You mean Wednesday? Careful with your words, Arkolf. Careful with your words. I was oh, say, I'm expecting it on my end, too. We rolled Wait, really for... well on Thursday. Oh, oh you all that. played Come on. on. Um... Nefany just kind of gives you this look and she walks over to you. She's going to get like cereal or whatever. And she kind of stops and she kind of walks over and she sits next to you on the couch and he goes, Dad, are you worried about Uncle Jericho? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I am. Is he in trouble? No. I don't think he is. He knows what he's doing. It's just, you know, probably just a older brother thing. She kind of looks to you, looks at 
I wouldn't know anything about that. She kind of like sits, leans back. She's an only child after all. Yeah. Yeah. Are you mad at him? When I, I was don't with know. That, when I was with that stupid orc guy, I could hear you yelling. <laughs> I don't know if I'm mad at him or not. Well, I hope you're not. <laughs> Do you want to walk just... to Yeah, I'll walk you to school. Okay, I'm going to have breakfast right. first. Okay. Do you want breakfast too? You watch as she like runs over and she opens up the fridge and throws it open and grabs the milk and pulls it out. Well, if the chef is offering... I will make you cereal with two different cereals. And he watches, she grabs two boxes. <laughs> In his mind, he, he sees the cereals that she's reaching for, and he's like, oh, no. It's like it's like Raisin Bran mixed with Lucky Charms. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's the good stuff. I hate that you like Raisin Bran. It upsets me to a very, like a very strong degree. Come on. Yeah, I hate it. It's awful. Anyway, uh, Nefane, uh, Meryl's general cooking check and cereal. Oh, God, there goes the dice. <laughs> this will you have a day. dice tray? I do, but I still miss. Um, <laughs> a little too much milk, but it's cereal. It, it's, you know, it'll it's fine. I just, I take a big bite. I chew it, and with a, with a mouthful, I say, my compliments to the shelf. You're welcome. She does like a bow and she like <laughs> takes a bite. Just ruffle her head a little bit. Yeah, don't, Dad! And she like fixes her hair. <laughs> All right. You, she collects her things. She has practice today after school as well for soccer. She kind of collects mm -hmm. her things and makes her way out she's just talking about the fairy she's like and so we, we threw darts at these balloons and then we got them all like all in a row it was amazing that's and pretty like, impressive i wanted to keep the bear but if i kept the bear i think that you know my snake would probably not have enough space to like do his thing so you know i figured she should probably keep the bear but i'm glad you got me that little cat which kind of yeah. runs down the stairs you tend to like the longer doodly things anyway, so. They're so cool. I'm going to write a report for my biology class about my snake. Can I take my snake to school? Mm, I don't think. Th no, I, I think Mr. Bubbles Should will be fine at the house. But what if Mr. Bubbles is lonely? Well, he's got a long cat friend to keep him company now, doesn't he? She watches uh, Nefane looks up at you and just gives you, like, these big puppy dog eyes, like... Oh, don't do that to me. Dad. I could get an A. And my friends <laughs> don't think I'm cool. He sort of taps on the wheel a little bit. Or no, I'm, we're, we're walking. He sort of... Mm -hmm. sort of taps on his leg a little bit. Ask your teacher first. <gasps> okay, okay, I will, I will, I will. And she tosses you her soccer ball as you guys are walking down <laughs> the uh, down the, the sidewalk. I catch it with my foot. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, an acrobatics check for me. Twenty five. Oh yeah, easy enough. You do like the little bounce, like kind of um, hacky sack, sort of bouncing between your feet, and and F and A just kind of gives a big smile. You eventually make your way, get on the bus, and she just, like, lots of stories. She seems a lot happier. Um, she tells you about Gertrude. Yeah. She tells you about Amelia and stuff like that. She's like, I thought she was a weirdo, but she's just weird but nice. It's, you know, she's kind of a weird kid, and she's still a huge weirdo, but, like, she's my weirdo <laughs> now. So, like, it's okay. You've adopted a weirdo. Yeah, kind of like you have. <laughs> yes, I've adopted three weirdos, and I work with them. Well, two weirdos. The lady's really nice. I like her. Yeah, she's pretty normal for the most part. <laughs> I just think about a couple <laughs> things. <laughs> ah, you just, you just literally, your mind just goes to Gibby just exploding into light when chasing down that bugbear in the <laughs> airport. And it's just like, hmm, it comes back <laughs> to reality. <laughs> that guy with the trench coat, what was his name? Brat? 
Bryant. His first uh, name's Michael, though. He's kind of, and she just makes a face. Yeah. Yeah. And Kel's <laughs> he can like... Be, he can be a little much. And then Kelly's really friendly, but he's got a really scary face. Yeah. He knows his way around an ice cream scoop, though. And he is very friendly. He's very friendly. But he is weird. But he's nice, which is fine. And I've learned dad. She, like, leans up against, like, there's, like, you know, a handrail inside of the, the subway line. She's like, I've realized that weird and bad are not the same thing. I'm very proud of you. She just kind of sticks her nose up and she kind of nods like, yeah, hell yeah, you are. <laughs> like, yeah. Eventually, the, uh, the we're all a little weird. I elves are pretty weird. Yeah, I'm learning in school. Yeah, we've got like long ears and stuff. Really it's crazy. <laughs> and like we don't sleep, I and mean, we don't have to. We can. I like sleeping, but we I don't. I'm like sleeping to. too. Sometimes it's good to have a have a nap. Apparently, you know, like people sometimes when they have trouble sleeping, they take like stuff that makes them sleep. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work for us. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Beep boo. Beep boo. Oh, here we go. And you watch as she runs out the door. <laughs> I'll you follow her. her. Yeah. You follow her out. You see, you know, man, general affair, um, people kind of running around. Um, and you see some dancers that you recognize but you're not in uniform so they don't really pay you that much mind if they uh, notice me i'll i'll just give them a little wave do you watch as like one of them notices you and kind of leans over to your informant and she just kind of gives you a look but like she's like she like she does she pantomimes like i'm ready to fucking run and like notices as you look away and she's like okay we're good i just <laughs> i just i wave her off i'm just like not right now <laughs> she kind of gives you a nod and you walk past Eventually, you make your way to Nefane's school. You see all the cars, the traffic. You're kind of happy you walked here because like, all the cars are congested in this space. Um, as you make your way forward, um, you as you're walking, you hear... Roll a perception check for me, actually. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Okay. Nine. Uh, without your notice, you hear uh, Amelia scream out. Or not Amelia, sorry. Um, Nefane scream out suddenly, just like, ah! Like, kind of shocked. Uh, as a dad, wouldn't I get an advantage? <laughs> uh, no, oh, well. <laughs> sure. I'll yeah. There we go. Preternatural oh. sense for these things. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zero Tannis, Damn. hero of the elves. Fighter of dragons and and destroyer of yeth hounds, uh, can't seem to hear the sound of a child sneaking up on his own daughter from behind. As Gertrude, the very plain, plain, very unfortunate looking human, uh, has ambushed your daughter from behind and is also kind of carrying you know her uniform and stuff for school. She goes, "Hi, Neff," and kind of like fixes her glasses. And Neff and goes, "Hey, Gertrude." Uh, Oh, uh, Dad, I'm, I'm going to go, okay? I I'll see you after school. I have practice, okay. okay? Okay, remember to ask your teacher about the snake thing. I will! And you watch as she runs off, and, and Gertrude runs off after her. <laughs> go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Oh, boy, here I go again. On my own. <laughs> Eleven. Okay. Okay. You notice a familiar car... You haven't seen it in a while, but you recognize it. Uh, as you see the back door open, you see Amelia exit out of the back of the car. Hey. And you see exiting out of the front seat, <coughs> Ragnar. I don't know if you heard what I said because you coughed at the exact same yeah, time. Yeah, I heard. I heard you. Okay. Uh, you see him exit out, and he kind of runs over, and you can see him talking to to uh, Amelia. And you're like you just see a lot of like, ah, and she's like, "Yes, I know." Like, and it's like, "I would," it's like, "Yes, I know." Did you want to hang back or do you want to approach? I'm. I'll watch them for now. And you watch as Amelia runs off. She sees uh, Nefane and she sees Gertrude, 
uh, and you watch as like sh she waves waves down uh, Nefane and Nefane's like oh, Amelia and they like both tackle Amelia like super hard and like you see Yagner going like oh do I protect the child oh they're children like you see the the sort of like tug of war <laughs> of like is this assault other kids but you know uh, he is going to survey though uh, roll stealth check for me. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, you see as Yagner kind of spans his head over and he does catch your eyes and you see him immediately. Almost like almost like a deer being spotted out by a wolf. You just see his entire form just stiffen as he catches you. I stare at him and wait to see what he does. He stares at you for a while. Time, time almost feels like it stops as almost a minute passes and you see him kind of reach up behind his neck and just kind of like, and he walks up and approaches you. I take off my shades and I stick them in the collar of my shirt. It's uh, been some, um, it, I'm glad to, um, First thing you note with him uh, is he looks like he got the shit kicked out of him. Uh, notably, he's missing a tusk on one side. It's gone completely. Um, I can't find the words for this. I, I heard that he had lost a couple of fingers. Is that correct? You do notice one of his hands is tucked into a pocket. They roughed you up. <laughs> Nothing I couldn't handle. Yeah. <sighs> He watches, he kind of reaches up and scratches the face and he, he kind of rubs where the, the tusk is missing. Notably, the lip is kind of folded forward as a re natural result of that. Yeah, it's not uh, proper for a copper ring to refuse the orders of not only the Baron, but uh, a lot of red rings. But... I'm guessing the order you refused was initially to kidnap my daughter. I knew you, and they knew you, and they wanted to know more, and I knew you had a little bird, and I have been helpful. I tried to explain that to the Baron, but... <sighs> Real big mess we've got ourselves into. He kind of turns over and looks towards the front of the school, and he watches the Three girls run into the front door. You watch as your daughter like runs into the glass and like the other girls laugh at her and she's like, ah, like kind of running inside and like she's like, that was just, watch where you're going. She kind of like forward. I just shake my head. Fucking <laughs> Ken. Crazy Ken. You know, if it wasn't the Baron, I thought it'd be you. You watch as he kind of looks down at the sword at your side nervously. You have all right, you know. I sure do. And I almost did. But I knew it wasn't your fault. You know, I had a hunch from the moment I met you that you we're into some shady dealings. Uh, I don't do the... Well, I... Yeah. But I trusted you regardless. I feel like I betrayed you. You did. But... like many things in life can be healed by time and 
actions speak louder than words for refusing to kidnap my daughter, you were subjected to punishments. I'll reach out and I'll grab his arm. The one that he's hiding no. or the one that's out? The one that he's hiding. He kind of like pulls away ashamedly for a second and then slowly you watch as he brings out his hands. He's missing the pinky and he's missing the ring finger. On his is he missing hand. the is he missing the ring as well? No, the ring's on the other hand. The ring you notably it's on the dominant hand, you noticed. <laughs> he kinda laughs. Don't worry, they'll grow back. Insight. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and insight that one. <laughs> Uh, 19. Yeah, you'd be this three. He, he's trying to make a joke. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm old. It's not a big deal. Just don't want Amelia getting scared, you know. Do you want to get a coffee? Sure. My, my treat. He kind of gives a smile, this toothy smile. Uh, he kind of brings you over to the car. <laughs> I'll get in. All right, you get in. It's, it's, it's compared to Durzab car. This is like, um, an uncle mobile. It's like one of those vehicles that has kind of like the wood trim on the outside. It looks like it's trapped in the 80s. You get inside and it smells like um, car freshener. And there's like little bowls with like little like mints in them. Um, and like the seat cushions have definitely been sat in by very large individuals. For sure. You kind of sit in and like you're 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 all the way back in the seat. Like your seat is almost in space. It's all the way far back. Oh, uh, right, let me just... And he kind of reaches between and grabs, like, the latch and pulls your entire seat forward, almost making <laughs> you crash into, like, the dashboard. Uh, I, I know a good place. And he watches... As the, the car begins to go. If his guy's car... Like, if Derizib's car is, like, a 10, this is, like, a negative 2. It's very bad. Um, and you guys take off driving. Kel... Yes. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Kelzorin? It's your mother's voice. Uh oh. Hello, Mom. Oh, boy. Kel the White Zorin. Oh, no, you used the middle name. What did you do? What did I do? I was hoping you could answer that. I'm going to need some context, because I have done a lot and I've done not a lot. Why is it that Ivan the White has contacted me about you? Uh... I have no earthly idea. Well, he contacted me saying he wants to meet you. What? That was precisely my question. Kelzorn, what did you do? She's like yelling through the phone right now. I don't know. It, do I it, have to call your father? <laughs> I think you would like that, actually. Oh, yes, probably. But don't distract me. What did you do? Is it my work with the Prince Division? Is it where I met Acid back? Do what? Oh, yes. A lovely meeting with him is part of my work. Kel the White Zoran. You get down to my office right now, young man. Oh, okay. See you soon, Mom. 
<laughs> it clicks. I need so much to do. <laughs> can we'll get dressed and go out the door. Okay. You do. So you get all dressed, you rush out the door, and you, you take So you know that really uncomfortable power walk you see people do when they know they're in trouble, but they're in a rush? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whole way there. <laughs> uh, you make your way to your mother's precinct. Easy enough. You've been there before. You know exactly where it is. Nice building. Um, it, it's it's a it's a collection of offices above a very very nice kind of like business space. Um, you you know the way up and you you get inside the building. Um, as you do, you immediately go in the front office. You see the secretary there, a uh, a dwarven woman, uh, tight ponytail, framed glasses with those points. You know the points in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, on on like the chain that goes behind the neck, and you watch as you walk in. She goes, "Oh hi, Kel." Oh, hello. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'd say she's been hopping mad since this morning. Would I know this lady's name? Ah, uh, yes, her name is Audie. That's her name. Ah. Uh, there. How mad are we talking, Miss Audie? She's been pacing back and forth all day. Didn't even have her coffee. Didn't have her coffee? Oh, no. You shouldn't talk to her until she has her coffee. <laughs> Should I bring her some? Could they be a good piece of it? Do you want it? I'll grab you. I'll grab you. So she watches you. You watch as Audie goes over to like, it's like shitty business, like office coffee, but she, you know, they put in coffee creamer and some sugar and they hand it off to you. Thank you so very much, Miss Audie. You watch as she does like a symbol over her chest for the gods and is like, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to need it. Mm. She steps back and hides beneath the desk. Like a man on death row, Kel will approach his mother's office. All right, you open up the door. The moment you open the door, like you can see your own breath and the temperature like decreases by like five comfy degrees. For Kel. It's comfy, but it's enough of a shift to get your attention. Hi, mom. I brought you coffee. You watch as she she's she's sitting at her desk and she just slowly the head raises. Your mother is her glamour is very well constructed. Um, the only thing she can't really disguise is the eyes. That seems to be her biggest challenge. Um, white hair pulled up in a top bun. She's a bit of a heavier set woman, which is kind of where you get it from. Um, you know, nice nice dress uh, shirt and skirt. Um, and just stacks of books, all well organized. There's a little, one of those little kinetic, like, you know, those little balls on the strings that kind of knock into each other back and mm -hmm. forth. She's got that going. She's got, currently has a stress dragon, like a little stress ball that's in the shape of a dragon in her hand, and she's just, like, constantly crushing it, and the eyes are popping out each time. Kel Zoran. Yes, ma'am. My son, who hatched from my egg... You do that, yes. I got a call this morning. Mm -hmm. Directly from Ivon Investments. Requesting you come in to their main office today to speak with Ivon himself. You know, I had some time to think about it. And I think maybe I might know what it is. Well, uh, the other day she, we were on a cage. She gives, she gives you the mom look like you better fucking explain right now. Like she like looks like you literally went on like a joyride and crashed the car and she's waiting for your explanation. No, no, no. It, it's nothing bad. The other day there was an active robbery at one of Ivan Investments Bank's. We responded to the call for help, and we helped stop it. That is a, maybe what it is about. Roll a persuasion check. Oh no. Thirteen! You guys tied. Ooh. Like mother, like son. Holy shit. Okay. She snorts, and you can see a little bit of, like frost coming out of the nose get in the car and sit upright back straight she kind of walks over and kind of smacks you on the back and for goodness sake can you do you and your father just do not know how to straighten a tie and she just fixes your tie and like fixes you up and pats you down in my defense it's really hard to see it 
breath, and she just kind of points towards you. I brushed my teeth this morning. How cold is your breath, Kalzoran? Oh, I don't know. Do you well, want me to use it? Yeah, well, not the full thing. Just <laughs> She just kind of exhales a little bit. Kel will exhale a puff of breath air. Cup, br right, breath it, of cold air. It comes out. She's like, okay, good. Let's go. Walk, young man. I'm walking. Okay, he just kind of like walks out the door and she locks her office. And you see Audie currently just like clearly not doing work, but pretending to as you guys exit. And without even like looking at her, you see your mother go, Audie, can you file away the Smith file, please? And she's like, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Cal. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Kill is walking. He will wave Again, to Audie. Audie does the same symbol over the chest and just like a prayer motion, just like points through you. If anyone <laughs> was wondering why Kel took so well to Mamaru Gigi, now you know why. Now you know. Uh, you load up in your mother's car. It's a nice car. It's not like Durzub's. It's, it's, you know, it's nice, but not egregious. As you make mm. your way towards Ivon Investments. Bryant. Yep, I'm here. Arkov, that was an amazing scene, by the way. Thank you. I'm just dying over here. Brian, you Go wake up. Kind of roll out of bed and you want to feed Kobe? Kobe! Right. As you go into the freezer to grab some frozen rats, you are out. <gasps> no. I got it. Like, like a baby bird, the mouth is open. He's like. No. I would like to order off uh, Arcanum Prime. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that here. Ah, crap. Uh, there was a pet store nearby, right? Yeah, there's a pet store within walking distance. I will take him with me. We're going to the pet store. Okay. Uh, you put him on a leash and harness, uh, and you begin to walk out on the city streets. People don't actually pay you that much mind. It is, you know, it is a unique pet, but there are bizarre things around. Um, you know, two-headed dogs and, and other strangeness, cats with wings, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. As you make your way through, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Oh, boy. You are not. Eleven. Um, as you're walking Kobe, Kobe is having a great time. Kobe is just like, you know, if you ever see a big lizard move, they like, they don't, they're not dainty. They like slap the ground. Like they want the ground to know that they're there. Um, as you're moving, you notice someone in the crowd, very overdressed. You see a man wearing like a suit and tie with like a bow tie, not like a tie tie. I'm currently trying to get people's attention, but no one's paying him any mind at all. Is he just like a, a beggar? Is he on a soapbox? Is he a performer? Like, does he any identity? No, he's like, you know, like there's a lady who's like, you know, walking and, and he kind of walks up to her and like, you can see him speaking, but she just keeps walking, doesn't even look at him. Hmm. And you see him kind of like breathe a sigh and then run to the next closest person and try and talk to them. And they just do the exact same thing over and over again. I'm going to keep walking my lizard because I've seen crazy people on the streets in big cities before. Okay. Um, you're going to break, you're not going to look at him? I mean, unless he approaches me, I would be focused on uh, Doggy Boy if he's just running around talking to people randomly. Okay. Uh, as you get closer, you see that this guy is, his mouth is moving, but you just, there's no voice coming out at all. Um, and as you continue kind of like watching at the corner of your eye, you watch as a person walks through him. Oh, God. <sighs> is there a... Is there a place where I can make sure that Kobe doesn't run away, where I can just tie... Or can I approach with Kobe? I don't know if it's going to scare him. You can approach with Kobe. Okay. <sighs> Brian's going to walk towards this thing and see if it notices him. Um, it looks like a young, maybe 20 year old something man. He's wearing like a groom attire. Um, his hair is like brushed back. 
kind of old style. Um, and he has this sort of like panicked look. Um, I would say on par, if not more so than Costumeyer knowing where Taryn is levels of distress. And you look at him. Mm -hmm. He catches your eye and you get the sense that he realizes that you can see him. And he like very timidly like kind of approaches and begins to speak, but you don't hear what he's saying. Uh, he'll notice that Brian will take a singular step back and look very off put, but he doesn't turn and run or anything like that. He's just going to kind of try to. Okay. The man kind of like acknowledges the move and kind of puts his, both of his hands up like, you know, I'm not going to hurt you and gently respectfully takes a step back as well. I'm going to do this out in the open. Look, uh, Nobody out here is going to be able to see you. Watch as he looks around and another person walks through him. You see him really thinking it, for a moment. It's not Ugh. really how it works. He makes like a motion with his hands, like a text message, like texting on a phone. He points towards <sighs> you. Ryan will pull out his phone and I just spin it around to him to see if he can type it, what he's trying to say. You watch as he, with the fingers... He does type on it. And as you flip the phone around, it says 6613. 6613, is this an address? He, he shakes his head and he puts both of his hands together and he does a gesture like, follow me. And he begins to move through the street. <sighs> Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Kobe, come on. <laughs> slap, 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 slap. He falls behind you very obediently. <laughs> you walk for about eight blocks with this spirit. Eventually going from these high rise apartments to homes that have, you know, existed as far as you know in the city for since its founding. They're old homes that have been, you know, constantly updated and, you know, they, they have a sort of quaint appearance to them, but they are flanked by these large apartment complexes. And you notice as the spirit goes up to the front door of one of them and points. Some of the door. He shakes his head sides to side and he points down towards your phone and then points towards the house. Oh, this is the place. All right. My, you want me to knock? I'll make a knocking motion. He nods. <sighs> Brian's going to knock on the door. This is going to be weird. Okay. So I'm just going to try and find appropriate music. You knock. Uh, the door is thrown open angrily, and you see a young man, very similar to the spirit that has led you here. And you notice as the spirit slips in through the door behind this individual, the door is thrown open. You see a young man, probably about 1920, similar hair, but like messy, you know, modern sort of style. And he kind of opens the door and goes, great, what else do you want? I'm sorry, have we met? He kind of leans down, he sees Kobe, and Kobe's just, like, sniffing some of the flowers, and he kind of looks up to you. Look, we're already packing our stuff and leaving. You don't need to harass us anymore. Uh, I apologize, sir. There must be some kind of misunderstanding. I don't think we've ever met. Is there a problem? Go ahead and roll a perception check for me, Brian. Okay. Ooh. It's 18. Okay. Uh, you kind of like lean in to the house, like kind of peering inside. It is a very nice home. Um, it's not like a rich, lavish home, but it is very quaint. You know, it, it is a home where a family clearly has been living and raised in. Um, and you see in the back corner a very old woman, probably, I want to say 80s, mm -hmm. currently in a rocking chair, just like devoid of any sort of expression. Uh, and you see that spirit currently kind of crouched, leaning in front of the woman, just kind of like putting his hand over hers and looking at her. And you notice behind on the other side is a young woman. You realize now the twin to the man who you're currently talking to, packing up and uh, taping up boxes. And he kind of turns away and goes, Nina, do you know this guy? And you watch as she kind of looks up and looks towards you and she kind of shakes her head. Uh, Mike's going to pull out his badge. He's going to show okay. it to both of them. 
Uh, my name is Michael Bryan. I'm with the Prince Division. I was just doing some uh, general checks in the area. I wanted to make sure everything was okay. You seem rather disturbed. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? We don't really like people who work for the city right now. Okay. Uh, I'm more of a private investigator kind of a thing. I don't really like the city either. Maybe we could uh, talk about that to start. I got plenty I could talk to you about. Roll a persuasion check. Oh my god, I'm good at those. 25. <clears throat> wow. He opens up the door for you. Let's see. He's going to walk in with Kobe. Uh, but before he does, uh, do you mind if my uh, basilisk comes in? He, I don't really want to leave him outside. Sure. Just don't worry. He's, he's house trained. There. Yeah. As you walk okay. in, you notice that there's like heirlooms and stuff that are just being loaded into boxes here. You see, like, as you walk in to the left of you, there's like wood and you can see the scratch marks where, you know, kids have grown up and their, their height has been scratched into the walls. Uh, as I walk in, as I see the person that's packing up, I'll just kind of tip my head, ma'am. She seems very suspicious of you, but she kind of nods. You notice now as the spirit leaves the woman kind of rocking in the corner uh, and walks up to you and and they can't touch you, but they, they, they point to your phone and then the number. Like, they seem to be, like, doing the number thing. It was 661, right? 6613. It was a four-digit. Six, six, okay. I'm going to put the phone out like I'm trying to fiddle with it to see if they'll text anything else additionally to explain what's going on. Otherwise, I will segue into figuring about that number. You watch as the spirit kind of moves down the hallway towards a room. I will follow it. Hey! And you watch as the younger kid kind of puts a hand on your chest and pushes you back and goes, what the hell do you think you're doing? I, I was just getting in the house. I don't have to go anywhere. I'll, you, you tell me where you want me to go. Who are you? You're an investigator? Who hired you? Uh, like I said, I'm a private investigator. I work for uh, the Prince Division. Show the badge again. He watches the, the girl goes, Tony, just let him do what he needs to do. There's nothing we can do at this point. You said you were having some problems with the city. Is that something you'd like to elaborate on? Yeah, they claimed our house. Foreclosure. You guys weren't able to make the payments? Our grandfather died, and we didn't have the will to show that we own this place. Well, I mean, that's records that the city should have, as long as you can prove that he owned the building. We don't. You know, like... He kind of looks over at the old woman and goes, My grandparents built this house a long time ago, and it's so stupid we never updated the records. And now they're seizing the fucking house. It was my grandfather and a house I grew up in the same week. Uh, is there a bathroom down the hall where the ghost went? It seems like, yeah. It seems yeah. like this is a living space and the bedrooms and the bathroom are beyond. He's going to turn back towards the uh, the couple. Do you mind if I use the restroom really quick? Roll a deception check. Fucking damn it. What if I actually had to go, Monty? You don't. Roll 17. a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> sure, just don't use too much toilet paper. You don't trust Bryant when he says he has a room. I'm going to walk down the hallway, and because I don't know where I'm going, if the ghost goes into a room, I'm going to follow it. And you watch as uh, the ghost kind of coaxes you towards the bedroom, the main bedroom of the house. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives you the smile, like, good job, you know, as it kind of to praise you. He can't say anything, so he just kind of gives you this nod. Very pained look on the spirit's face. Like, everything the man said and how upset they are, you get the sense that, you know. This spear will absolutely be able to tell that is uh, as uncomfortable as Bryant obviously was and still is. He is attempting to push it down to figure out what the hell is going on after hearing that story. Okay. So it's a slight shift in the demeanor. Uh, but he will follow wherever this ghost wants him to go. All right. He watches the ghost shifts into a closet behind the door. Uh, Bryant's going to open the closet. Okay, you grab it. It's one of those rickety old kind of folding closet doors. It's not one of those sliding ones. It's like, ch -ch -ch -ch, and you kind of fold it over. And you notice the ghost is kind of crouching and pointing to the back door. Is there something in here? 
go ahead and roll an investigation check. No, With advantage, the ghost is helping you. Okay. Eight. Okay. You kind of press around, and you feel the back door kind of shift slightly. Like, there's some give there. It's, like, not fully in place. Uh, I'm going to try to move it if it looks like it can be opened or moved out of the way. Roll an athletics check. Okay. 23. Okay. You manage to purchase it, and you peel back, almost like a oh, goblin, almost like <laughs> a piece of thin wood. You just kind of peel it back, and it, it snaps and pops, and you begin to hear footsteps rushing, and as you peel it back, you see a safe behind a false wall. And the There's spirit points towards your phone. Yes. Brian, Brian's immediately going to put it together. It's the code. He's going to pop it in. All right. As you do that, as you go to do that, the uh, the son, you assume, or the grandson kind of turns the corner and goes, what the hell are you doing? Hey, man, you need a warrant. And you watch as he is going to try to grapple you. So go ahead and roll an athletics check or acrobatics of your choice. I'm going to fail on purpose. I'm okay. not going to any resistance. He grabs you and he slams you. You have your your phone in your hand. He kind of slams you up against the wall. And you hear uh, another set of footsteps. Says, Tony, what are you doing? This guy's trying to fucking rob us. Sir, I have a question for you. It's very important. Is there any kind of a safe or lockbox in that hidden room? What hidden room? And you watch as the, the woman goes and goes, oh, Tony, look. And they both kind of turn. What? How'd you... He kind of gives you this look. He looks bewildered by you right now. Look, my cell phone is in my hand. I'm going to hand it to you. Do me a favor. Just go put that code in there. He nervously takes the phone and he watches the two of them. It's an old, old, old safe. Go to roll a knowledge arcana for me. Okay. Ooh. It's a seven. <laughs> you have no idea what the safe is, but it is a safe right. and you're used to those. He watches the two of them, you know, try and like, like he watches like they're doing it. It's like, God, I wish they didn't have keypads back in the day, huh? And he watches they kind of twist the knob and eventually the door <laughs> opens up. The inside, you see a stack of papers, um, box, like jewelry boxes um, and like a wedding ring like case. And you watch as the two of them, like just start pulling stuff out and start flipping through them. It's, I, I found it! The will! And you watch as he takes it out and pulls out. It, it's the deed! It's the deed of the house! And the two twins just hug each other and start crying. Like, they just start bawling. Oh. They, they, uh, fuck, man, I'm so sorry! And the guy just runs over and just gives you the, like, the Ugh. most, like, you don't want to be hugged, but he's hugging you. Sort of hug. Oh my god. Tony, 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 look! And you see as the woman is folding through love letters. Old love letters. You watch as the two of them hurry you out and they just take everything and they begin to like the, the man Tony goes and like begins to to call on the phone and you hear him talking probably some sort of city official of some sort going no we have the deal yes we have it here it's signed it's old but we have it mm -hmm, yeah you watch as the woman goes over and like hands the letters over to the old woman rocking in the chair who kind of breaks out of her stupor and begins to like take them out and read them and you just hear these words so full of love just recited and she starts crying just these big tears running down the wrinkles down her face you watch as the younger twin girl kind of turns towards you and goes thank you i, I don't know who you are but thank you so much I'm yeah. sorry about my brother. He's a meathead. He watches the brother and he goes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of a meathead. No, 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 you can send someone down in tomorrow. He's just kind of still on the phone. No, it's, it's fine. I have no room to call anybody a meathead. You, an old woman kind of looks up towards you. How did you know where this was? I don't think you really want me to answer that. Not that you believe me anyway. Thank you. The deed is one thing, but thank you for this. She holds up the letters. Did you, uh, did you lose a significant other recently by any chance? My husband died of a heart attack about a week ago. Has he been buried? Yes, we buried him. 
You should go say hello and tell him thank you. You watch as the spirit walks past you and walks over to this woman and puts a hand on her, over her hand and kisses her on the forehead and knowing your job is done, you walk out and meet back with Kobe. And you see standing at the front of the house, the same spirit kind of looks towards you. You hear a voice for the first time. Thank you. As it glows and fades, passing on. Brian is immediately going to bolt out of there as soon as he hears a voice. Come on, soft, Kobe. Soft voice, gentle voice, thankful voice. It still freaks him out. He's never heard a voice before. You rush out and he watches the woman, like, as you turn the corner, he's like, would you like some iced tea? Oh, she's already gone. All right. Good job, Brian. You get a free reroll for that. Ooh, you got inspiration. I'm going to mark off inspiration. You mean if you do stuff like that, you get rerolls? The DM's discretion, you can be given inspiration. Yep. Imagine how many rerolls you would have been if you'd been nice to that little dragon newspaper guy. Imagine how less significant this moment would be if I had been. <laughs> Speaking of significant moments, Gibby. Yo, how am I supposed to follow that? Come on. Trying to find... Uh... Oh, God. It's so hard to find, like, modern ambience. What's this? Nope, that is not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I mean, <laughs> nope, no, nope, that's not the one. That Maybe for the previous night. Maybe, <laughs> oh, but uh, not, not that. Nope, we're good. Um, did I peek on that? How much did I? Pe okay, I didn't peek. No, I kind of peeked. Whatever. Sorry, Austin. I'm so sorry. What's this? Sure, it'll. I'll make it really quiet though. Ah, uh, no, actually, that's... God, it's so hard to find. I'm just going to do no music. I don't think there's any music appropriate for this moment. Anyway, uh, Gibby, go ahead for me and roll a perception check. Mm. Goblin, no. Hi, Goblin. <laughs> I Hi love you. Boop. Five. Five? Okay. You're you're out like a light. You're exhausted. Again, it's that scene from Dragon Age with the big bull man when he's leaving. Hold on, I gotta deal with my cat real fast. Goblin, I love you, but no. Yes, you're very cute. I'd love to play, but no. All right. Sorry, give me half a second here. All right, so you are you are out like a light. Um, you do awaken though to the sound of a door opening and closing. It kind of like lulls you out. You kind of blink a couple times. You are very warm. Um, you were in a, you're in, you're in the bed, um, and you've got, like, way too many blankets on top of you. What the heck? I pushed one or two off to feel like, okay. You're just kind of like, yeah, they're, like, haphazardly thrown on top of you, and you're just like, mm, and you start shoving them off. And you feel some look around as, a. <laughs> is there anyone in the bed with me? Uh, you roll over, Durza is missing. Um, but as you kind of turn back, you feel one of the blankets put back on top of you, and you just lure, turn over, and you see Durza just going, you look cold, and he just kind of puts another one on top of you again. No, I'm I'm actually pretty warm. Um, thank you. Oh, shit, sorry. Okay. I just, uh, he kind of jabs a thumb over towards the door. I just had your clothes sent down to get clean, so, you know. Oh, thanks, thanks. Um, you, feeling just, you, you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm, um... Uh, she kind of looks at him for a second, then she just starts. <laughs> okay, you're laughing. I oh boy, he watches his cheeks just go absolutely red in the face. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm great. I'm great. You look great. Oh goodness. You sure you hit your head or something? He kind of like just he just like gently puts a palm to your forehead and kind of like squishes you back down onto the pillow for a quick second. I just grab his arm and just kind of bear hug him as best as my little frame can be like, nope, I am, I am great. Thank you. <laughs> he kind of goes back over and lies down next to you. Oh, you seem a little scared for a minute, but you know, you, uh, 
You're one impressive woman, Lauren. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's it has been a while in general, so. Mm, same, same here. But um, it's good. <sighs> mm. I could, I could eat a horse, honestly, not literally, but you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. You want to eat here? Or do you want to go out? I mean, I wouldn't mind showering first, but. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm, I'll probably hit one after you. Okay, sounds good. He kind of he like as he get, he sits up and goes, and he just grabs the blanket and quickly throws it over top of you and runs to the bathroom just like a kid. Like, I throw a pillow. Oh. I throw a pillow after him. Okay, roll roll just a general strength check or dexterity check of your choice. Uh, I'll probably get more out of de dexterity. Eh, four. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you throw it, and it like falls way too short, and he just kind of like laughs and then runs into the bathroom. You after a while you hear like the, the faucet go off. Um, there is a robe that was put next to you as well. Um, it's like one of those like hotel robes that you would get, kind of prepackaged in like a little plastic thing. Uh, where is my phone? Uh, it is on the bedside table next to you. I'll just uh, grab it and lay back on the pillows, just kind of, kind of check to see if anything's come in. Mm, nothing really. There is a news report. I guess I'll scroll through that. Okay, uh, it's a video. Uh, play. Okay. Breaking RNC story. Terror strikes the city today as a body was discovered today near the Rampoon City Carnival event. Police have closed off the area to complete their investigation. The body of a 54-year-old human man named Martin Fain, a well-known geneticist from Thorne Science University, was found with a broken neck near the eastern side of the park at midnight tonight. Evidence so far points to first-degree murder, but police are asking anyone with any additional information contact them to aid in this investigation. Until, until such time as the police have concluded their investigations, the Rampoon City Carnival will be closed. Anyone wanting to refund their event tickets are free to contact Fair and Goods and Entertainment for refunds. We will keep you updated as, and it just kind of keeps going on and on and on. Okay, this is a new name, right? I gotta write this stuff down. Uh, Marden Fain, yes. Marden, Marden, not Martin, but Marden. Marden Fain, yes. How do you spell Fain? Like that. I'll just type it to you. M-A-R-D-E-N-F-A-N-E. Marden Fain. Uh, Gibby is not quite like, oh my God, oh my God, but honestly, considering what went down at the carnival the other night, she is concerned. Coincidence is a little too close. Uh, she will take the link to that video and shoot it to the group chat and t do an additional line of, I don't know if I think this is a coincidence considering and send it off. Okay, all you guys in your respective areas, <laughs> Uh, Tannis, you in the car with, with Yagnar, um, Kel, you in the car with your mother, and, uh, Bryant, you walking your, your basilisk home, uh, with more rats in your pocket. You're at the pet store currently paying as you get this text message. You all hear a ping as you all receive the message. And they said this happened like last night. So like literally while we while we were, we were there, this probably went down. Midnight. So they found the body at midnight. Last night, midnight. We found. Everyone else is being very quiet. Is everyone else here? Um, to double check, how long does the carnival stay open? Was this like after hours when everything's closing up and stuff? They would have found this. That would have been after hours, yeah. The place usually closes at around 10, 30, 11. After hours. Okay, cool. I think I got everything I need. Mm. And we're here. We just didn't want to interrupt the scene. Okay. Yeah, you guys all received that information from Gibby. You guys all get sent the same video. You watch it all with the same, you know, delivery. Cal will notably not watch it in the car with his mother. In fact, the moment he hears that notification, he's going to quickly mute his phone. Okay, you quickly mute, your, mute the phone and your, your mother turns to you. Which, by the way, it is uh, going to start raining because I want some sound. And There we go. That's nice. All right? If the ODST soundtrack starts playing, I'm out. Uh, Gibby, after probably about 10 minutes... Um, you hear a knock at the door, not the bathroom door, but the actual apartment door that you're in right now. You hear a little, little knock going. 
Is the water in the shower still going? Uh, it sounds like, yes. Uh, well, I'll grab that robe and I will... Does he have a peephole or anything to his door? Uh, it looks like there is, yes. I'll peek out that peephole. Okay, roll a perception check. Blink. Nine. Rolling great. Okay. You peek out, you see absolutely nothing. And yet, you still hear a... Knock. My detective skills indicate that maybe this person is shorter than the people. Maybe. Well, I guess I will open the door and sort of peer around. Okay. Uh, as you open the door, you do not speak orc, I assume. No. Uh, you hear a voice go, ak, ak, shmuk, ak, and you watch as a goblin looks up towards you. <laughs> hey, I was right. He was too short. Um, I'll just uh, look back and be like, um, sorry, common? Human? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, Durza? Looking for Durza? This, first of all, this is probably the ugliest goblin you've seen in your life. Uh, his face looks like a moldy avocado. His nose is, like, almost the same size as his face, um, that hangs down past his mouth um big kind of like um bushy eyebrows and like frazzled hair pulled back kind of somewhat neatly and he's wearing like a little butler outfit it's very cute <laughs> um you watch as he's like holding up like a weird tag with like a key on it and goes uh, yeah there's a he kind of leans and looks through the door red ring uh he is. Um, I could take that for him, or I could, um, I could try getting him, whichever you why, prefer. Why, why human here? Uh, human guest. Um, g g give me one second. Um, I'll just sort of. Is he already in the room, or is he sort of still outside? You see, he's outside. He's not entering. You get the sense that he respects the space of a red ring. Yeah, I'll just. Um, uh, one second. I'll just uh close the door and I'll go to the bathroom and sort of knock. Okay, you go to close the door and it's like it hits something and you're just there, ah, as his nose gets caught in and then you're just like, oh shit. Oh it's god, oh like god, sorry, I'm sorry, oh god, sorry. Ah. Sorry, 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 sorry. And, like, mm. ah, ah, kind of just like fixes mm. it like that. Just like, just like so complex, like, I'm so sorry, one, one second. Carefully close the door this time. Okay, you gently close the door. I'll go knock on the bathroom door. Do, 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 do. What is it? Um, there's a, a person outside with, I, I think it's a key or something for you? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think he speaks common. As a goblin? Yes, yes. Just take the key from him. <laughs> okay. I go back Watch to the Watch the magic at him if he gets stubborn. Come on, <laughs> give me. <laughs> I go back to the door and open it. Um, he's like, um, he says I should just take it. Yeah, the goblin kind of holds the key, but just looks up at you very suspiciously. Um, he also said I should not take any guff from you? What human do? Uh, I didn't, what, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a guest, honest, I, I didn't do anything, I, um, I mean, if if you want to go knock on the bathroom door and, and ask him yourself, be my guest. He looks very perturbed by you. I'm like trying not to smile too much because I'm just like, I don't know, don't don't do that. Roll a persuasion check with disadvantage. Hey, even with a twenty-four. Wow, natural twenty and a twenty-four. Holy shit. Okay. He hands you the key. Uh, okay, thank you. And, um... Human lie? I no, kill uh, human. Um, I will keep that in mind. Yes, thank you. Keep mind, yes. And he watches he just, like, literally, like, scuffles away. Like, very, like, you know, hands tucked in like a velociraptor and kind of shuffles away. <laughs> I will close the door and, well, I guess I'll take a look at the key. Okay, it's it has a number on it, it has six on it, and you're just like, oh, okay, weird. Would I would that be like? Uh, would I know if that's a room number or a floor number uh, or roll an investigation check? Okay, 
Ugh, nine. I finally nine. got one good roll and everything else is crap. It's a key with a plastic tag that says six on it. It could be literally anything. That is just the bare bones information I wanted. Yep. So what do you do while you wait, dude? What do you want to do while you wait for this? Um, I will... I will... Does does Durzup have like a a coffee making thing in this room? Like I don't know. He does. Yeah. Um, I'll make some coffee. Back with it. Okay. All right. You go ahead and you start making a co some coffee. It takes you all to figure out. It's like figuring out a shower at a different house. You're just like, how do I? Where do I put the water in? Like, what the? F ah, gah. But eventually you figure it out. It takes you a good decent amount of time. After about maybe ten more minutes, eventually you hear the the water stop. Um, and I'm going to sneeze and I'm going to apologize now in advance. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Damn it, you put too much pressure on me and now my eyes just hurt. Okay. Um, <laughs> eventually you hear the water turn off and you hear the door open and you just see a bunch of steam just bellow out of the, the room. And you watch as Durza walks out with just a towel around his waist. And he's just kind of like currently just like kind of like brushing his, his little, little tiny little hair that he has on his chin at the moment. <laughs> I'll take a look and just raise an eyebrow like, hmm. What? Nice. Thank you. He just kind of gently strokes the beard. He's just like, <laughs> so voluptuous and full. Just kind of laughs. Um, I, coffee? Yep, yeah, and I've got a key. I kind of dangled Oh, that. that's for your clothes. I had the oh. laundry people clean it for you, so go pick that up. <laughs> that's, it was just for my clothes? That goblin was really possessive of it. Welcome to goblins. They're kind of a um, little bit... Uh, rough around the edges but mm, orcs oh. goblins same sort of thing to be fair i guess he doesn't see humans in the stronghold that often not really um amelia she kind of leans forward hates them just so much just absolutely hates them but uh they're kind of um grabby mm. especially for things of their size that they can have so you know some of them are nice some of them are a bit uh kleptomaniacs but uh yeah, he seemed a little sour with me. But then again, I get it. I guess I he wasn't expecting to find me here. Mm. I wonder if he actually would have gone and knocked on the bathroom door if he hadn't trusted me enough. Oh, if he did, um, you know, walking out of here would have been very difficult for him. Sometimes for some of us green skin races, violence is the only language we understand. Oh, it's like one. It's like wanted to make a joke about that, but now I feel bad. <laughs> mm. By the way. And he walks mm -hmm. over to you. He kind of cups your hand, your head in his hands. He just kind of puts, you know, scoops his hands beneath your chin. And he just kind of leans down and kisses you on the forehead and goes, human kiss. And then he leans over and gives you a kiss on the neck. And he kind of leans back and goes, or kiss. Good morning. Good morning. Does this mean morning. I get to touch the tusks now? As long as it's not in front of my boss. <laughs> or any other red rings. Yes, but be careful. I do have a Gibby, Lorne Gibby. I have a reputation. Look, I'll I'll give permission for the butt if you give permission for the tusks. Tastefully. 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 Tastefully agreed. Uh, I think I'll hop in the shower real quick. Okay. Sounds good. I'll uh, drink this and um, figure out where we'll go for breakfast. Yeah, I mean, um, if I'm kind of curious what you guys have here. Okay, yeah, we can get a table downstairs. No one's in in the morning, so. Except for the hungover people. Real shame. <laughs> <laughs> or those right, of us going. who have had an interesting night. More than you'd think in this building. Now get on, you rapscallion. <laughs> he kind of like scoops you up from behind and just kind of pushes you towards the bathroom. Or I throw <laughs> you out. I'll go, actually, I'll go pick up your clothes, too, while I'm at it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I will go into the shower. Okay. Roll an investigation check for me really fast in the what shower. What am I investigating in the shower? A cute little thing, but if you want to, go ahead. And oh, okay. I check. hope I make it. Uh, okay. Ten. You needed a 10. Uh, you know that pomegranate shampoo you had in your house? Oh, he has it? He has a bottle of it. It's a fresh bottle of it that he seems to be using. Oh. Uh, it's just like, it's just like, mm, oh, that's so damn adorable. Ugh, just wash your hair, wash your hair. Yeah, it's a big shower. It's a really nice shower. It's like got like multiple like actual like um 
shower heads in it and it just like it's amazing it's probably the best shower you've seen this is a nice nice apartment gibby um, feeling rather rather loose uh, loosened up and silly tries not to think too much about the possibilities of that for later mm. uh, eventually you're bow, chicka, bow, bow. anyway um you feel fine it was a nice night um you know there's was considerate probably too much so um and you learn some stuff um you know orcs don't kiss on the mouth they actually kiss on the neck because it's the most vulnerable part of the body so it's a trust thing ah. um, you also learn that your relationship is very weird and not because of the human orc interaction but the fact that you guys are not physically the same strength which in orc society is part of the fighting before having sex is to make sure there's no power imbalance so it's meant to establish a very you know, cling on of them yeah, the strongest get the strongest, the weaker, the weakest get the weakest, and you know, in between all that and all that jazz. So he found a creative workaround, which was the dancing. Uh, but eventually you come out of the shower. The towels are egregiously large. <laughs> they're way too big. Uh, they're almost blanket size. It's kind of ridiculous, but you kind of I love I want a towel like that. <laughs> I want to wrap really myself up like too. a big blanket and a towel. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's pretty thick too. Uh there's a hair dryer too. You see you have every amenity that you would need. Uh, sure, I'll use that. Is it like oversized too? Or wait, I thought you said Durzab only had like one bit of hair. <laughs> he does, yeah, but he still this has it's applied like a hotel room, so it's you know constantly updated. The man is fastidious, I'll so give him that. Yeah, the place is clean. Like that's the thing about him is that you think like an orcs would be like you know stuff all over the place, but actually it's very well organized. And anytime you think, huh, why is it that way? You just get a vision of Mama Rukigi, and you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, sure, I'll uh, use that hair dryer. And you just kind of dry your hair, uh, and eventually you're all good to go. And you hear a knock at the door. Dursa goes, uh, "Do you want your clothes? Do you want to leave out here naked?" <laughs> I open the door with the towel on and just, uh, just be like, "I'll take them." Okay, you sure? <laughs> he just kind of holds it back, kind of teasingly. Could you give me my clothes? Okay, I'm not afraid clothes. to drop this towel right now. Okay, here's your clothes. <laughs> Not like you haven't of... seen anything already. I know, but you might die of shock. You know, it's cold out here. Come on. <laughs> Give me my clothes. I will be out in a minute. Human skin is just so close to the blood vessels. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, you get... All right, I get dressed. Yeah. And you go and go out and you get lunch with Durzab down in the main area. You get some looks on your way out. And every time like an orc kind of gives Durzab a look, Durzab's like kind of does like, you know, the, the sort of like, um, <laughs> aggressive like the, the head jut you know and they're like you want to fight bro like that sort of thing and all the orcs are like well, okay fine we'll back up <laughs> you, you want to go you want to go eh hey 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 i'll check your head and i swear on me mom it's like, um, it's like those crabs and finding nemo hey 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 as you walk by you see amelia's room uh is currently being cleaned uh but she's not present there you assume she's probably at school um and you see the tortoise currently being herded by two goblins. Like, they're just kind of, like, they're, like, it seems to have, like, they're cleaning the cage, but they're, like, what do we, what the hell do we do with this tortoise? Like, they're both, like, trying to herd it because it's too big for them to pick up. And they're just, like, ah, 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 <laughs> Like, the tortoise slowly moves. They're, like, ah! They both, like, kind of back away from the tortoise, like, ready to attack. And it's just, like, pretty ridiculous. Eventually, you get in the elevator. The radio is plugged in. It's playing music. Um, and you make your way down to the bottom floor. The food is nice. It's, like, um kind of like disneyland food i've never been to disneyland but but i've heard the food is pretty legendary it's like oh, really nice catered that's, food man it's well the one thing i will slag on disneyland about is that it's good food but they kind of tend to recycle it between like stands like mm. they'll have one stand that'll be like oh mary poppins chicken strips and fries and then there'll be another stand that's basically like is like you know like like Pinocchio's chicken chicken slabs with fried like it's the same yeah, stuff yeah, they yeah. just like creatively rename it but it's like the same food but yeah, yeah there's good food there yeah there's only one source here which is the kitchen and the portions are huge um the food is really really good it's all like pancakes and like you know and all sorts of like really like there's like waffles that are filled with like like whipped cream and stuff like that it's a little ridiculous and a little showy but it is a very you're nice killing me, Monty. I'm sorry you uh. wanted to have breakfast at the York stronghold this is what you're getting God, Stacks of eggs, all the thing, thing to do, thing to do when the world goes back to normal. I might take a, like a day trip to Vegas and just hit one of the buffets. 
Mm. That's all I want to do is hit a buffet. Nothing super fancy like steak and like, you know, seafood, but it's all like, you know, nice breakfast food at least. And it appears like you're not the only people kind of eating here. This also seems to be the eating spot for like most of the orcs um, for the most part, but they like, they're kind of coming and going um, about their business. So, you know, as you do. Did you want to spend the day with Dursib or did you want to meet up with your party? Um, let's see. So, yeah, we're not expected into work today, are we? You are not, but you have some information. Um, I will I say mean, this, Tannis. Tannis, you get you get some coffee with uh, Yagnar. I don't know if you would want to role play that scene out or if you just want to ask a couple questions. Connor's dead. I will miss him. Well, Damn. Um, anyway. Okay. My mic is muted. Oh, God, he's back. Uh, uh, he's yeah, I'd probably, I'd ask him a couple questions, probably. I mean, I'll, I'll, um, I'll spend as much of the day with Thurs up until, like, we do need to meet up, because I, I feel like, you know, okay. if they, we have a meetup, I, I can just be like, okay, duty calls, blah, 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 blah. Gotta go. Okay, yeah, sure enough. Yeah, Thurs up is, like, you know, you guys just talk a lot and shoot the shit. Um, he offers to drive you, you know, drive you around to get you groceries or something like that, you know, that sort of thing. Do uh, I need groceries? I mean, you live in an apartment, so you figure that out. So. All right, fair, fair enough. <laughs> need milk and eggs. All right. Yeah. So, Tannis. Yep. You go to a grubby, in the middle of nowhere diner. Uh, it is, the menus are greasy, uh, the smell is amazing, and you see the food being prepped very closely in the back. <laughs> it is very much like a small mom and pop, like, breakfast place. It's not the same restaurant that Durzab took you to, but it's not too dissimilar. It's it's much smaller, though. It's like a little, sort of, like, in-the-wall plaza space. It's not a separate building. And you guys sit down and get some coffee. Yeah. Uh, uh, order whatever you want. It's on me. <laughs> uh, if they have tea, I'll order it. Yeah, they do. They have all sort of... It's kind of just base teas. It's yeah. clearly not an establishment that serves elves. Notably, it's mostly kind of humans, orcs, um, and also um, like bugbears and some other, you know... Some other species that, you know, usually in this sort of sector aren't considered citizens, but they are being served here, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you order a tea and it gets taken to you. You guys just had on like, it's a little bit of like a, like a shoulder to shoulder sort of restaurant. Um, you guys kind of sit down and Yagnar just kind of, you know, runs a hand through his head. Yagnar's always had this sort of disposition of like, whereas Durzab is kind of a stupid idiot, but he's still a mafia boss. Like this... Yagnar does not give you that energy at all in any facet of his character. Like, you cannot imagine this man fighting anybody. Yeah. Here is a pretty big coffee, and he kind of puts in some cream and sugar and kind of stirs it up, and he still looks like he's, you know, been sent to the principal's office a bit, and you get the sense, a really great sense of shame from his face, but he seems to be kind of like, you know, trying to shoulder it a bit, and he kind of just, like, looks up, and he goes, so, um, how is she, your bird? She's okay. She's doing great. Her, Her and Amelia, Amelia friend. Yeah, they're yeah. friends now. They're gonna have a it's sleepover just... at my place in a couple of days. That reminds me, are you okay if I stay for that? I sort of slow, <laughs> slowly look up from my tea at him. I'm sorry. Well, a bodyguard, and you know she's not supposed to be anywhere without someone to watch her and. The boss will wring my neck if I don't do my job. And he kind of oh, sips the boss. coffee really, like, awkwardly. When he says the words, my boss, the porcelain sort of creaks under his hand. Uh, it's part of, you know, um... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, this coffee's really hot! <coughs> oh! I just mean, you know, I, the kid is, what if something happens and, you know, and we're not there. I understand. I mean, I could just wait on the car outside. <sighs> I 
Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just do. I'll just do that. Um, I'm sorry, I. Mm. I just don't know how my daughter would react. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. So, wasn't so. you who actually did the deed? Mm, Was it? No. no. Takes a lot of. Takes a lot to stand up to your boss. I'm assuming. Yeah, I haven't been really in this, been in this life for you know too long, so. I can tell. Some of those boys have been with the Baron since they were just pups, you know. So. They're probably pretty loyal to a man like that. Well, he basically raised most of them. He sort of shakes what? his head. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that way, you know, Mr. Tannis. But you have to remember, orcs, we've had a rough go of it. And the Baron's... I'm well aware. You know, it's... it's I'm not saying it's right or nothing, but, you know... A lot of good folk would be dead if it weren't for the Baron. But a lot of good folk would be alive, too. You're telling me things I already know. Based on what Durzib said, you've been a lot through a lot. Um, wish I knew what the Baron thought of you. I know how you think of him. He just sips the coffee and kind of, ah, it's still hot. He thinks he can make all this better by giving me money. I don't understand that. How he can make a huge mess like this and just think it's all better. Okay. I'm sure he'll make it up to you. Maybe it just doesn't seem like that, you know? But I'm not the Baron. I'm just the Copper Ring, so... No, you're not. What about you, then? Just kind of looks at you, kind of like eyes a little wide. He just puts down the coffee. What, what do you mean? Is this what they do to people who refuse an order to kidnap a child? On his yeah. order? Yeah, it is. Amongst other things. There's a hierarchy, you know. You got your no rings, they're at the bottom. Copper rings up above that. People who are in debt. You got your silver rings. A bit more loyal, you know. Tend to be the ones who've known him his whole life. And then you got the red rings, and those are... Those are the real, um... Contenders? I don't know what the word would be for that, but they're, um... The loyalist dogs, I guess. Mm. Don't don't tell like him. Like like there's a Yeah. There's a save the Baron's life. You ever see that kid's scar? He kinda like puts a hand on his chest. Have I seen it? Um uh, I think Gibby's definitely seen it. <laughs> um Well, but... yeah, I'm sure she's seen a lot. <laughs> mm. I mean I mean no, I, I think <laughs> the only time we've Whoa. seen it is when <laughs> Uh, he was at your apartment at my yeah. place. Like, if he came out in a towel and they saw him, he might. Oh, have seen I would have seen did, that then. You did see it. Yeah, it was this really nasty necrotic scar that, like, literally was like channeled up his body. It went past his shoulders and went past his waist. And Gibby, you would know that it goes almost all the way down to the leg, like probably well, well to the ankle. Holy it's shit! Big fucking scar. It's huge. Briefly, once. Mm. It was an assassin I heard, you know, trying to kill the Baron. Durza got between him and the spell, and poor kid. <sighs> he was in the hospital for 
five months. No painkiller could help null that pain. I can tell that he's been through quite a bit as well. Joseph's a good kid. He had a rough start, but, you know, he's a good kid. He's scary, though, too, you know. He's, um... He's done some things I'm sure he's not proud of. I'm not yeah. mad at you. That's why I'm upset. You should be mad at me. I'm mad. Don't get me wrong. I'm furious. Porcelain creaks a little bit again. He watches, he just looks down at your finger and just you can see the visible, like single visible sweat drop and he looks back up at you. But I'm not mad at you. You're not mad at Amelia either, are you? No. She's just a kid. She can't control any of this, anything that happens to her. Not yet. Anyway. Just children. Innocent. I won't let it happen again, Tannis. Next time is to my grave. I'm old. For an orc. <laughs> Be an honorable way to go. And he sips his coffee. That's not right. That's the way of orcs. Kel. Do, do, do. You know, Auntie Beck spoke highly of you. Kel. <laughs> yes. What on earth are you doing talking with ancient dragons? It is part of my job. Mm. Prince Division, if you recall. We entrusted one into his care. I know that your father has taught you all the ways of being a human. And now I'm beginning to realize that I've forgotten to teach you the ways of being a dragon. It's generally good to consult with the ancient of your circle when you've interacted with other ancients of other circles. It can be viewed as treacherous. Mm, I see. I, I don't... I'll be honest, honey. And she kind of gives you this look like, I want to say honey, but you're still in trouble, so there's a bit of white mm -hmm. to it. <laughs> You are a half dragon, so I don't know how big of a deal that would be, but just be on your best behavior. I'm always on my best behavior. I'm doubting that right now. I understand that, but truthfully, I would not do anything that would disappoint you, I would hope. I'm not worried about you disappointing me. I'm worried about losing you. So long as it does not affect you or dad, I will accept whatever comes. Oh, your dad will be fine. Will you? That remains to be seen. Mm. You guys drive up to the front of this massive pearlescent skyscraper. It is a bit gaudy. Um, it rises up in the dragon ward uh, as your mother parks in the front um, and steps out. Well, I'll wait for you here. You're not allowed with me? He only asked for you. That is fair. And do not worry, Mom. She kind of walks her. Yeah, she hugs you and she goes, You can tell me to do that, but that's impossible. Dragon or no, I'm still your mother. And I'm still worried about you. Constantly. I know, but it is my duty as a son to tell you not to worry, and then to do things that worry you. Apparently. I need to speak with Osmond. You would like that, yes. He would. Ooh, ooh, I know. You can talk to him 
while I'm in there with the ancient. Oh yes, I will talk to your father about you. She gives you this look like, oh no, now I'm telling dad. Oh no. Gil's going to turn around and start marching. <laughs> All right, you march up the front steps. There are these sort of metal framed, like white marble staircase that runs up. You see a variety of different races, mostly human, elf, dwarf, um, decent amount of, of other white half dragons. Not a ton, but there's a few um, as you make your way inside. You've been here before. This is this is a pretty common place for white dragons to go. I mean, obviously the ancients here. Um, as you walk inside, there's signs everywhere like, you know, start a new credit card with us at Ivon Investments. Interested in your retirement plan? Like there's all these signages everywhere. There's like screens that are flicking through different billboard advertisements as you make your way forward. Um, there's a main baking area and then off to the side, there appears to be a secretary area and uh, elevators beyond that. Kel will head for the secretary area. Okay. You see a uh, younger looking elf, but who knows how old they are, uh, currently manning the front desk, hands off some paperwork. He goes, thank you very much for coming to Ivon Investments. Uh, yes, next. Ooh, hello. 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 <laughs> I'm Kel Zorin. Uh, I was uh, told I was requested by Ivon the Ivory. Oh, are you Ifneo's son? Yes. Oh, okay. And you watch as she, you hear some, some typing on a keyboard. She goes, Oh, yes. Okay. Um, here you go. She hands you off a key. Do not give that to anybody. Uh, elevator, and you're going to want to lift the second panel below and just put that in, and you go right the, all the way up to the top. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for your help, ma'am. Yes, of course. Uh, take care. You too. I hope you have a lovely day. Oh, and um, be mindful not to touch anything. Oh, I won't. Okay. Then Kel will make his way to an elevator. Okay, you get to the elevator. Sure enough, there is a secondary panel that's kind of hidden beneath the main panel of the skyscraper, and there is a keyhole, which you put the key in and you twist, and it kind of glows with this sort of arcane light. And you hear the little voice, like, like you know, floor one. You hear it go, private floor two. And it begins, you just feel like the entire elevator should just jettison you upwards. Does the elevator have music? Yes, of course. It's like too repetitive though, and it's like, oh god, after like the first four times, it's like mm. but whether or not Kel likes it is up to you. <laughs> Eventually the elevator reaches the top and you hear a fucking as the the doors slide open. Um and immediately your feet are met with like a sort of um slightly aqua blue like you'd be a red velvet carpet this is like an aqua blue carpet that kind of runs over this really nice marble hmm. go we'll step out is there yeah. anything directly in front of him okay. uh sorry i'm just gonna grab some appropriate music really fast oh no worries sure. we'll just do the office that'll work um, immediately in front of you, you see a wall, um, with kind of nothing on it. And the, uh, the, the carpet banks to the right, and then to the left is just, like, marble flooring. I am going to assume it's the carpet. Gail will follow the carpet. Okay. You follow the carpet. Uh, you've been to hear some voices, people talking, and as you turn the corner, you see, um, a few humans, all humans, actually. Uh, about three of them. One is currently kind of sweeping up, and the other one is kind of like wiping down uh, a display case. Um, they all seem to be maybe mid twenties, male, female. Um, two men, one woman. Um, the woman has like really nice long blonde hair, very similar to Gibby's, but like much longer and a little bit thinner. Uh, Gibby has quite a decent amount of volume. Um, the two men are wearing very nice jackets, like almost like Bryant's, but like actually designer, like more meant for, for presentation over function. Um, very, very like modern, like slick, very like, nice looking clothing. Um, as you proceed forward, you notice that on the wall from like floor to ceiling are like katanas, like beautiful katanas that are hanging up. Um, and as you kind of continue walking on the left side are just anime figurines. Mm-hmm. Kel will not know it knowingly. He knew mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, you know about this. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. 
And for about, like, 60 feet is just anime figurines. And uh, on the other side, it goes from, like, katanas to just, like, giant bookshelves of, like, manga that are just, like, floor to ceiling. And the ceilings are quite high. A couple of the humans kind of turn and give you, like, like a look, like, oh, look, this guy is coming through. You're not probably the most common figure to come through here, but, you know, they're, they're looking at you not incredulously, but just, like, acknowledgingly. Kill a wave. They wave back. They're like, oh, hi. <laughs> and you make your way through. Um, you turn the corner, and it's just, it keeps going. There's just more anime figurines. And it's like, we're not talking like, oh, like one or two per cabinet. We're talking like 50 to 60 per cabinet, if not more, to hundreds. Um, and it is a massive, massive collection of anime figurines. Um, eventually, you're led to a set of stairs that go up. Um, and there are, like, full-on wall scrolls of anime characters just hanging on either side of the stairs going upwards. Um, some are signed, some some are just, like, really, really nice and look limited edition. Um, you don't collect such things, you can't really ascertain the, the value of these objects, but you continue up the stairs, turn around, it's almost like a coil, eventually leading you to a set of uh, doors up at the top. Gail is very careful not to touch anything on the way up, not even brushing it. Yeah, it's 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 relatively easy. Um, the fact that people are cleaning does help you out because they're, you know, kind of between you and the objects. But even the glass cases, they're immaculately shined. It's it's a very clearly beloved collection. Gail will knock on the door. Okay. You hear the door open up and on either side you see two women older are probably in their 40s uh wearing again these really they're not even like formal outfits they're just like really cool outfits um and the doors are pulled open and you see uh sort of a main like office space it's different to acid backs space it's probably not even his living space uh but you see currently sitting uh you watch he kind of leans up and, and turns off a tv you see ivan the ancient white dragon um he is very lithe, um, very tall, has like long Sephiroth hair, like just pure white Sephiroth of hair. He does. he does, yeah. Um <laughs> and like I'm sorry, Connor, but I'm I, I'm not dragging this because it's a good style. He's wearing like, you know, devil may cry outfit levels of clothing. Like Excellent. it's not it's not like a suit and he's not about that shit. He's wearing how many belts? Like, how many belts? How Oh, like, I, I think he's got about six. He's got, like, two. <laughs> nice. Like, he's got, he's, no, probably eight. He's got one on each, like, he's got one on the upper arm, one on the bottom arm, one on the bottom arm, one on the upper arm, and then, like, three around his waist. This man is the storm that is approaching. <laughs> he is the storm that is approaching. <laughs> and he is approaching you, Kel. And as he approaches you, we're going to take a break here. Oh, I hope that man cosplays. Ugh. All right. What are you what the fuck do you think he's doing right now? Sarah? Shadow Kaiba! <laughs> <laughs> he's just got one of his poor hapless minions doing doing the other parts with him. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go feed the cat. Fear me! Also, it's worth it's worth mentioning that this is the first ancient dragon that was designed in personality. So, Excellent. You know. Oh man. All right, what a weebus dragon, but a weeaboo. <laughs> I can't wait to see what chat thinks of him. He is a literal blue eyes white dragon. He is the white dragon. Shadow Kaiba. <laughs> oh my god, Connor. My mother's big hands no pathetic cards, Ivan. <laughs> But it does have Casmodius, the Forbidden One. Shaking my head right now. Casmodia. <laughs> Casmodia. Yes. This is kind of a weird session. I hope you guys are having fun. I figured. You I'm having fun. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. some random Steve. Yeah. It's so fun. Giving to five subs to the community. We'll probably have. Uh, we'll have you guys reconvene after this scene. Cal. Yeah. If you live, of course. <laughs> Always a possibility. He might he might cast you into the shadow realm, so you know as you do. Man, 
I hate to put someone on blast, but someone was complaining how all my ancient dragons are kind of weird. And I'm just like, I'm like, boy, they're going to not wouldn't, like Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't you be weird after all if these you years? Live, if you live for like hundreds of years, you just don't give a fuck anymore. And you're just the biggest weirdo. I'm sorry, but that's just the natural progression of things. A, a cat named Garbage. Thank you for the 5,000 bits. How do y'all? Long time viewer, first time dropping bits. Got to catch up on the VODs before I can catch the streams for Prince Division, so I'll see you then. Fair enough. And thank you for the tier two sub as well, a cat named Garbage. Shiny lamp. <laughs> oh, God, I drink way too much coffee today. Fuck me. Shiny lamp, thank you for the 11 months in a row. Almost a full year of tossing shade at Bosco. <laughs> Nay, nay, 2021. Thank you for the five months of subbing. Uh, yay, Prince Division. So glad to catch it live this time. N Zombie G, thank you for the six months of Prime subbage. Love you all. Have a great session. Zacco Duo, thank you for getting a tier one sub to Grizzly Adams. Uh, Cook. Kuklanish, thank you for the 10 bits. Goddamn Irish myths. And you're hard to pronounce names. Athens, thank you for the uh, Athens 619. Booyaka, booyaka, thank you for the 200 bits. If the Prince Division consisted only of Terran, it would be the Dense Division. Oh, she's not, she's not that dense. Uh, Hemi Head NHRA, thank you for the 11 months in a row doing the thing. Hargolift Studio, thank you for rating with a party of nine. Exiled Striker, uh, thank you for the prime sub. Zacho Duo, thank you for getting a tier one sub to Kaiba Corp. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. This weeaboo ass dragon has got me fucked up. What's next? A gold dragon that writes Harry Potter fan fiction? <laughs> Just some random Steve. Thank you for gifting a tier one sub to five members of our community. Game Master Anth, thank you for the 100 bits. We need fan art of this ancient white yesterday. Erwin Elf, thank you for the 510 bits. Monty, does he have a snow miser figure? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. Da 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 da. I'm Mr. Icicle. I'm Mr. Ten Below. Hey, might be that for you soon. My apartment smells like farts. What is happening? I'm gonna. All right. <laughs> I wonder why. Hmm, stares at Monty. Why are you staring at me? I don't smell like farts. I smell like a are flower. You, are you farting? No. You, you farting over there? No, I'm not. You getting a little... It's probably... Shut up. It's probably because I had curry in here. The, the scent is like halved, so it smells like... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It, smells kinda, it, it tends to linger. It does. Yeah, it sticks. So. Uh, Ran Cossack. Think of the 100 bits. Ivan is peak dragon. You may not like it, but this is factual. Ivan? Oh, Ivan. Yeah. Dreadhunter 355, or 335, thank you for the 400 bits. One of the best dragons yet. If he has a buster sword, it has to be signed. <laughs> <laughs> Offbreaker John, thank you for the 100 bits. Here's Devil Trigger start playing in the background. Where's that coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Verdian Winter, thank you for the 500 bits. And now Goomba is a dragon. Please tell me. Goomba's not. He, turn, Goomba's... he turns around. Hey, everyone, I have on the white here. <laughs> Where you get culture shop? Arcanum tube. <laughs> uh, H Lone Heart, thank you for the 11 months. I was going to make waffles tomorrow morning, but I guess I'm switching to pancakes. Mm. Do both. I haven't had pancakes. I haven't had canola stoves, yeah. Dude, I watched the like a while ago. I watched like the Korean waffles where they fill it with cream, and I was like, oh. mm, <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. 
Uh, Travis A. Carey, thank you for the 210 bits. I can't wait for the ancient red dragon uh, to be dressed like a weeaboo who plays Fortnite and dabs on the haters. <laughs> Flame pants and all. Ancient red dragon <laughs> who plays Fortnite and dabs on the haters. I can't believe it. He just has a huge mustache and he cheated on his wife. <laughs> the red dragon is a <laughs> bastard. Sounds like it. It goes without saying. Well, it was said, but... Also, it's Ivan, not Ivan. So it's I-V-O-N. Yep. Ivan the Ivory, which is what Kelp said to the secretary. Yep. <laughs> there it is. I understood that reference. Yeah. Did we call, did we call out... Uh... Oh, probate dropped a huge bit amount. Yeah. I'm uh, getting up there. Um... <laughs> From Zenlita, 500 bits. Screw the rules, I'm a dragon. <laughs> Freddy and Winter, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Equinox 4. Gudrun, thank you for the 100 bits. Ha! Sephiroth goes... <laughs> Faceless, 42, thank you for the 100 bits. Second time sending bits. <laughs> yeah. Probs is not a bot. Thank you for the eight months of Prime Subbage. If only Monty commissioned a pic of this ancient white dragon from that art check. Hmm. Well, you know, that costs, you know, respectfully, that costs money. And also Jack costs is... costs real people dollars. And Jack is, a, you know... Busy boy. Busy boy. Constable Mutton, thank you for the 100 bits. Is it bad that I want to play out like Nero first meeting Dante? <laughs> what, just getting drop kicked? <laughs> Nom Nom Goblin, thank you for the <laughs> getting drop kicked after getting drop kicked after after killing the Pope. Jack's not as busy, but at the same time, it would have been pretty last minute. So, Nom Nom Goblin, thank you for the two hundred five bits. Ready for Goomba to guest star as this dragon? <laughs> Rand Cossack, thank you for the one hundred bits. Ivan's the storm that is approaching. Encroaching black clouds in isolation. Uh, Thunder King, thank you for the 1000 bits. Happy Valentine's Day from the future, aka South Korea. Ooh. Have a long break today, so glad to spend it with the Prince Division. Anyhow, thank you so much for the 1000 bits. Cosmosis 45, thank you for the 100 bits. If we never meet another ancient in game, I hope you'll share their dossiers and designs with us. Between Ivan and Acidback, I'm trying to figure out, uh, but I'm trying to find out as much as I can about the other ancients. They're very interesting. Kuklanish, thank you for the 10 bits. Uh, Defective Sheep, thank you for the five subs. Get to the community. Probate, drop. Just read the message. Thank I you know, for the 10,000 bits. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Dropping 10,000 bits just for a pun. If they opened a pancake restaurant, it'd be called the Blintz Division. Absolute legend. <laughs> I want to make pancakes now. Me too, actually. I was thinking about that earlier. I have to clean my apartment, though, because I have someone coming over tomorrow. But uh, maybe, I, maybe I can make pancakes afterwards. Pancakes. We're probably going to be running late tonight, but... yeah. Whatever. Uh, Vantanagi, thank you for the 200 bits. Kelzor, and you've activated my trap card! Well, you I activated mean, my pot of greed. What does that do? It allows me to draw two cards. Oh, shit. Isn't that card banned now? It yep. is. Apparently. Yes. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hemihead NHRA, thank you for the 500 bits. Sending a small care package of bits. Clear the drop zone. Nay, nay, 2021. Thank you for the 100 bits. I saw you guys were live and immediately hopped in. You guys were so refreshing after a rather awkward conversation. Oh, I hope it wasn't too awkward. Shahalem, Shahalem just posted, Mr. Ivan, can you please turn down the music? I can't hear what you're saying, Mr. Ivan. She posted, Bury the Light. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted the bit message. Do you want to finish that? <laughs> I was just I was just saying I hope it wasn't too awkward in NA twenty twenty one. What right? was the awkward moment? I I don't know. Two cents change, thank you for the six months of prime subage. What happens? 
Hang on. What happens if you put Charles into William, the prince division? What? I'm, I'm assuming this is some sort of Prince Charles joke. It is my goal. Sorry, I'm just seeing people talk about Virgil and how much I hate him. It is my goal <laughs> to catch a shiny Garbodor and name it Virgil. <laughs> Every time I, I see I a just... raid battle that's like the yellow one, which means it has a higher chance of being a shiny, I just jump in immediately just hoping I can get a I, Garbodor. I understand <laughs> being angry at him because he whooped your ass. <laughs> Uh, I, but get in, I'm getting some cereal. I just well, don't myself, get why you're so angry at him. I hate him, man. He's such a fucking butt chin and stupid haircut and his dumb face. He's not stupid, and don't make fun <laughs> of his face. He they used an actual model for his face. So. I know, but <laughs> um, the the 3597th fake slim shady thank you for the 200 <laughs> i can't wait for i want to throw up gang signs and banish kill philippine <laughs> 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 you're going to present <laughs> i should have oh it's so stupid <laughs> do we have do we still have bosco did bosco like I'm yeah, i've, I've been here the whole time Okay, hey, cool. you just reading bits. Sorry, sorry for making you guys kind of have to sit out of other people's stuff. This is like the only D and D game where you guys can actually split the party without, you know, absolutely yeah. devastating outcomes. Exiled well, actually, striker. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Ivan. Exiled striker. Thank you for the sixty-four bits. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for being an awesome D and D group. Always watch you guys on the vods and on YouTube. But this is my first time catching you live. Take these bits for much love and respect from the exiled one. Hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Destroyer777. Welcome to Strum. Yeah. Destroyer777, thank you for the 100 bits. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the 100 bits as well. Hype. <laughs> Monty, you okay? <laughs> Sorry, I just read Sister King's message and it fucking killed me. <laughs> I almost inhaled my wall. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> He's an ancient white. He can't do gang science. But, okay, anyway. Okay. Uh, uh, earliest bread, thank you for the 200 bits. Just held my pet tarantula Jeff today and almost dropped him. You made me quite the scare. Do, but... do not drop them. Literally, if you drop a tarantula from like the height of just holding them as you're standing, it can kill them instantly. They're not oh, that. No. They're very fragile. Thankfully, also, no one was hurt. Also, Jeff is a top tier spider name. I love it when people name animals just normal human names. It's my favorite thing in the world. He just, he just walks up and looks up at you and he says, My name, Jeff. <laughs> um, I, I still want to, I still want a tarantula, kind of, but like, I don't want, because Gerps doesn't eat crickets. Now it's just like, I don't want to have to go out and buy crickets. Uh oh. Uh, Exiled Striker, thank you for the five additional bets. Also, thank you, Connor, for pronouncing my name right. Not many streamers get it right. A. Hey. Nia and the Mantid, thank you for the 50 bits. Does Ivan host cons? He probably is definitely a, um, what is it called? A, a person who fundraises sponsor. or whatever? Like, sponsor, yeah. He probably sponsors <laughs> them all. It's got a monopoly, Hemi Head. Man. NHRA, thank you for the 505 bits. Ain't much, but it's bits. Thank you so much, <laughs> regardless. Knack. Are you good to go, Sarah? Are you eating your cereal? Yep. Thank you for the prime sub. Uh, it said to share my anniversary, so I clicked the button. Hey. Travis A. Carey, thank you for the 100 bits. Guys, please, this ancient white dragon played Dungeons and Dice Monsters. Plays Dungeon Dice Monsters. <laughs> Dungeon Dice Monsters. Uh, by Duke Devlin. I believe so many people are going to have like ideas of how iPhone is going to be, and they might be mildly disappointed. So, temper some <laughs> expectations, please. Uh, L Lake Chin Chan, thank you for the two months. Ready for an amazing ancient horde and more ghost hunting. Big Peace Pipe, thank you for the 95 bits. Ancient Red is a dick because the other ancients haven't invited him to their private games for 500 years. <laughs> uh, and finally, Encore Pride, thank you for the 100 bits. How have I not sent you guys bits yet? Here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 
You've now made the blood pact. You will be as large as the time. I'm trying to see you. <laughs> All right, we good to keep going? Yeah. All right. So, Kel, uh, you walk in and into this space and you see uh, Ivan stand up from his desk um, and kind of stride on over. Again, very nice, slick, not at all practical clothing. Um, you know, like like ridiculous leather pants and like, you know, boots that are just like, you know, these high boots, um, long, like almost like trench coat jacket with a collar that's way too high. Um, just it's it's a good look, but it's just so not what you're used to. Uh, and he kind of pokes his head up and his smile brightens um, and he goes, Oh, you must be um, Ivnio's boy. Yes, sir. I am Kel Zorin. Oh, look at you. You're so cute. And he just kind of walks over and kind of like shakes your hand. I'm Ivan. I believe we met when you were little, but I'm Ivan. Nice to meet you. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance as well. Oh, don't need to be all stiff. Everything's fine. Come on. He kind of smacks your back a little bit. May I wave with you? Hmm? May I wave with you? Yeah, of course. Good. Kel will wave. Hello. He waves back. Ah, you definitely have more of your father's outgoingness, I will say as much. He raised me well. Let's walk and talk. Are you okay with walking and talking, or would you prefer to sit? Oh, no. I'm perfectly fine walking. Oh, let's go look at my collection. Uh, thank you. And he kind of points to the two door door women, and they just kind of give a nod. Uh, you're good. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. And they kind of leave. So I hear that you have been very busy in regard to my banks, Mr. Zorin. Oh, you were talking about when one was being robbed the other day. Yes, I heard that you and your companions were nice enough to stop a rather ambitious robbery attempt on one of my most prestigious banks, and I must say thank you very much. Just doing my duty. I would like to assure you that our security has been doubled at that location, and we shall also consider upgrading our security at other locations to prevent such thefts in the future. Again, it's rather concerning. I'd rather not let people get hurt. Employees are other Hmm? Did everything get returned safely? To my uh, knowledge, yes. But any losses that were procured, I'm willing to relieve some of my hoard to make up for that. Uh, Ivan guarantees security and financial advisement, as well as financial existence. And he kind of gives you this slight wink. Mm. Oh, uh, he kind of steps over. You see now as uh, one of the, the humans is kind of like stopped, and they're, they're way more casual with this dragon. Uh, I don't know if I've, I don't think I've ever had, these are my princes and princesses. And he watches one of them, uh, a young woman, probably, probably five years older than Taryn, you'd say. She kind of just like waves and she's like, hey. Kill a wave. Hello. Uh, this is Xana. Xana, this is Kel Zorin. Hey, Kel. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Pleasure's all mine. I'm done. I'm going to get lunch. <laughs> she just starts walking away, and Ivan's like, uh, Oh, yes. So this is uh, my horde. Do you like it? Are you impressed? It is massive. It is like a museum. <sighs> Roll a charisma check with advantage. Nine. Uh, you watch as Ivan kind of goes and goes, Thank you. I am glad someone appreciates it. But I wouldn't say it's a museum. I say it's more of a time capsule. You know, give it a few hundred years and most of these objects are going to be worth even more than they are now. Like like this. This. And he goes over to this figurine. Uh, this is my Matsune Hiku, rarest figurine that I have in my collection. Yes. They've only made three of them. And I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. Impressive, isn't it? You can see the mold lines. It's one of the original sculpts. One of the very original? One of the very original, yes. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, that's all well and good with the with the bank and everything. And I am very much thankful for what you've done. Um, oh yes, that one over there. That's a that's a super ultraman figurine. As you can see, it's molded completely in gold. 
don't know why they did that, but it is a nice piece. Gold, sure enough, you... gold is really soft metal, though. You have to be very careful with that. I don't know how they did it. Sure enough, it's like an action figure that's literally like gold. Huh. Um, <clears throat> apologies again, getting distracted. Um, your mother speaks very highly of you, um, and your father. Get a little smile. Your mother is also a rather impressive dragon on her own right. Uh, to be honest with you, the woman scares me a little bit, but, um, you know, I can be just as ferocious. <laughs> he kind of, like, does, like, a cool pose. <laughs> I am curious about your current employment, though. In what regard, sir? The Prince Division is a interesting place for a half-dragon to work, but, you know. That is the feeling I get at the precinct days that I'm kind of like a duck out of water. Hmm. Well, you know, good representation for us. I mean, come on. <laughs> he kind of gives you a pat on the chest again. You already seem so friendly. It's, you know, good face. Most people, uh, humans in particular, are rather scared of dragons. But I mean, how bad are we? And you guys walk past like this, like this statue of like a dragon anime dragon just blasting down on this hero knight who's like being <laughs> just besieged by it um <clears throat> he kind of puts a hand over it i digress um the prince division is of a particular interest to me because i was not aware that it came back yes well myself and my partners were actually new hires very very recent uh. I should probably put more money into funding there. I, I do like your division quite a bit. I like the work that they do. Um, that being said, I, I couldn't help but have been made aware, you know, word travels through the dragon grapevine every now and again, of a particular case involving dragons. And um, there is a bit of a wonder as to why perhaps I was not consulted, given our relationship. You are talking about when we entrusted Miss Sivum to acid back scare, yes? Yeah, that, mm, I, mm, okay, I'm, I'm a little bit insulted, I'll say that much. You know, I, you knew me. If it is any I... consolation, sir, I had suggested we contact you in regards to her, but I was overruled. And yet, I only heard about it through the grapevine. I, I, I don't mean to be nosy by any regard but i am a dragon it is part of being a dragon knowing what the other dragons are doing best to my ability um i just you know i i feel like i run a good ship here i'm just you know maybe maybe you can give me feedback is there anything about my character that perhaps made for some hesitation that i could solve i do not think it was anything regarding your character that case had some extenuating circumstances the princess oh. in particular being in love with uh, a green dragon. Roll it, roll an insight check just really fast as you're having this conversation. 16. Okay. He seems envious, or jealous even, uh, which is kind of the nature of a dragon. Um, no matter the, the the most, you know kindest dragons tend to be jealous of other dragons that's just kind of part of it um but he does listen to you intently and he does seem quizzical and you guys continue walking and as you slow walk he kind of points at specific figurines they're just some of them are just ridiculous like you're just like he paid money for this <laughs> like you're just like really mm -hmm. um but he, he continues walking with you and, and asking questions he goes in love like with acid back no not with acid back uh one of his distant progeny, I suppose, if that's the case, because we're all kind of technically related to the ancients. Well, Acidback um, doesn't really... Well, he does, but not usually. He's a weird duck, that one, but... Um, she was in sure. love with a green dragon by the name of Cost, and she would not part with her. He watches, she... he leans forward, and he's like, Oh, forbidden love. Yes. Costemeyer, along with us, she went to great lengths to save Miss Sivum from another green dragon who was draconic uh, treason, you know. It reminds me of this anime that's really good called Aura Love. It's all about forbidden romance. Well, just watch it. I don't want to spoil anything. Interesting. 
But as and- Mac extended her an offer, because a green dragon was involved, he got involved. He came to the hospital she was at. Oh, and that's why I... Okay. Uh, Miss Sivum would not go with him unless he both spared Miss Kostemeyer and allowed her to come with. So an arrangement was made. Interesting. I guess of everybody, Acidback would probably be the most willing to share. (laughs) Again, weird duck. Um... You no, know, in the future, if you know anybody who's not too content with being a prince or princess, perhaps running into problems, put in a good word for me. I, I have a very lovely place here. But of course, as I said, I did suggest you. Oh, and yes, for your friends as well, your, your co-workers, um, expect a check for your division, um, perhaps to use on some cars, you know, for driving. That is very generous of you, sir. Yes, thank you for the stopping the whole bank robbery thing. Above and beyond is appreciated, of voice. And, um, Cal, again, with respect, let us keep this conversation between ourselves. Yes? But of course. My lips are sealed. Respectfully. (sighs) Oh, Well, um, I'm going to give you my contact information, if that doesn't trouble you too much. That is perfectly fine, sir. Hmm. Don't give it to your mother. He kind of goes over and he hands you off a piece of paper. Yeah, we'll take it. It is a business card. Um, The strange she would give you a business card. He kind of looks at your face and goes, oh, only you can read this. I designate who's able to read them and who's not. And you're one. Oh, I see. That is a handy bit of magic. Oh, yes. Well, they say that dragons made magic, so, as you do. Very glad to have you around. I hope you enjoyed the collection as well. It's been many, many years. Mm, Very proud of it. Uh, Would you like me to escort you out, or could you find your way, or do you want me to collect a prince to escort you out? Oh, no. I can find my way. I do not wish to impose. Oh, of course. Very nice talking to you, Cal. And uh, do tell your mother hello, and you're not in any trouble. I know how she frets. She is immensely worried, yes. <laughs> Most dragons would just toss you to the wind, but she cares. It's very lucky. I love her with all my heart. Mm. She loves you back. Take care, Cal Go ahead and roll one more insight check on him. Eh, 12. Okay. Seem friendly enough. Make your way out. Yep. You relay the message to your mother, and she seems relieved. She takes you out for food. See, I told you everything would be fine. I still worry about you, Kelzorin. I know. So... Do you guys want to reconvene together? Do you guys want to head home? What do you guys want to do? At this point, all of your meetings with individuals has come to an end. Uh, what time is it? <clears throat> um, Depends on how long you want to spend time with Durzip, I suppose. Or, you know, I'd say it's probably by the time Kel is done, like maybe two in the afternoon. Oh, I mean, as I said, if, if, if people decide they want to meet, I'll go with. But otherwise, I'll just keep doing as I do. Do we want to meet? I think we should. Maybe we can talk about that murder at the very least. Yeah. Sort of uh, probably important. It's Prince Division adjacent since it happened at the place we were. It also happened at a place we were. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I do want to text somebody before we meet up, though. Okay, who would you like to text? The Baron. You don't have his... Wait, we no, got you it when Amelia number. was in bed. That is right. You do have his number. Mm-hmm. Okay, what are you texting the Baron? At your earliest convenience, I'd like a meeting with you. This is Michael Bryant from the Prince Division. Okay. I'm setting that off. No response yet, you think. 
The Baron, to your knowledge, is a busy man. Mm -hmm. Do you want to include Durzib in the in the get together, or do you want him to go away? <laughs> Me? Just all of you guys. I'm fine with Durzib. Okay. Take it or leave it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, Bryant. I mean, I don't want him there, but I'll live with it. <laughs> <laughs> and Gibby, do you want him there? Oh, well, sure, if he wants to. Yeah, sure. Like, is one of us texting the other and being like, we should meet up, or we just... Like, I assume that's what's happening. Suddenly, suddenly our inner bat signals go off, being like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tannis will probably be the first to say we should talk about this. Yeah, at this point, all of you guys have seen the, the video. Was this, um, was it said that this Marden Fane was a, was a prince? You or do we not know. know? You do not okay. know. What did they say he was again? I think they mentioned his job or something. Geneticist. 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 I don't know how to spell geneticist. Autocorrect me. Genetics. Ha ha. Got it. So you guys meet up at like a maybe a, you guys want to meet up at a diner somewhere and just like get coffee and just sit around and talk or yeah why not sure. okay. a little patio area oh nice that's not oh wait matter. it's raining right covered insight patio. insight might be a bit more comfortable yeah maybe for the humies Okay, Cal, we can't all be ice dragons, okay? <laughs> yes. I am Canada uh, in dragon form. Oh my god, you kind of are. <laughs> Super polite and nice. Super polite and nice. <laughs> Quick to apologize. Not resistant to cold. Free health care. Fuck! Anyway. Cal, it's Canada confirmed. <laughs> wow. That's kind of poignant. <laughs> All right, you guys sit down at a you know diner nearby the the uh, Heaven's Ward Prince Division police station. You guys all sit down together. Durzib's there. Gibby shows up. Oh, Durzib and me show up together. Yeah, yeah. That's probably the only oddity as you guys all convene together is that Durzib shows up with Gibby. But is it really though? Yeah, at this point, Ooh, is it really? Know, it's, I just look over at Bryant briefly. Brian is stone faced. You guys sit down, order coffee, some donuts, maybe some artisan cupcakes. Ooh. Uh, can I actually, during the day at some point, have sent a text to Lucy um, inquiring about this Martin Fane and what information we could get about him? Okay, yeah. Uh, at this point, as you sit down. I mean, if I hadn't uh, done it then, I would do it now anyway, so. Yeah, let's say you do it now just for the sake of, you know, ease and timing. Uh, you guys all sit down, you guys get your food and mull over the uh, news thing. Um, you get a message back from Lucy that says, um, Martin Fane is not a prince. He's not in the registry, at the very least. Uh, the, the investigation, the homicide investigation team uh, has confirmed that he is not a prince, so. A little info hmm. from Lucy. Apparently this guy wasn't a prince, so. Well, that's a bit strange. Although I guess it's not terribly strange. To be fair, murders are kind of a thing in the city. Yeah, but murders at the same time we were there last night with the interesting people who happen to be there as well. If Why is it not a prince, then I doubt there'd be any interest there. What is a geneticist doing at a park? After what midnight. Is, what is an orc mafia member doing at a park? Hmm. I'm just saying. Just, to be fair, just, he could have just been there enjoying the fair like anyone else, but... It was after midnight, though, there. right? Well, they found the body after midnight. He could have been hmm. there normal hours, been disposed of somewhere where they didn't find him until they were cleaning up.
Can I, like, Google Martin Fain? Sure. Go ahead and roll an Arcana check for me. Oh, jeez. Here we go, folks. I pull out my phone and... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> phone breaks. Wow. All the information is gone. As you go to look up the name on your phone, your phone is dead. It needs to be charged. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Must have forgot to plug it in when I was trancing. I don't suppose. Do you think Mike might be able to help us with this? Mike? Uh, yeah, but maybe look up the name and see if you can find something first. You know, I, I. Mike's a busy guy. Not you. He points towards you, Michael Bryan. He's like the other Mike, the green one. Um. He's a little busy with Amelia's thing. I wouldn't want to, you know. Above game is like, well, I didn't want to do it obviously after uh, one roll, but it's like I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do. What is it called, Google in this world? Arcanum. 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 Yeah. I'll do an Arcana check. Let me With try. Guidance. Woohoo! With guidance. Eh, Thirteen. Roll a D four. Um, oh, I should do the thing. D four. Four. Ooh. Nice. That's nice guy. Uh, you go on your phone and you look up, you know, uh, Martin Fane, uh, but then you type in some additional information, knowing your knowledge of Google searches and arcane searches. Uh, professor Martin Fane is a geneticist and professor at Thorne Science University. He's a Ooh, teacher there right. for 10 years. Let's start right down. Sir, uh, what was that university called? Thorne. So, T. Is that the one with an E? Yeah, with the Nancy with the Thorn. Answer. Yeah, so Thorn, Thorn with the e. University. Ten Thorn Science years. University. Yeah, for ten years. He's a genetics professor there. Science University. Okay. He has a lot of awards based off of your search. He's he's won a lot of awards for his theories and his hypotheses. Um, Any seems specific his... theories that stick out? Um. He seems to have a theory about um, evolution of magic in creatures, specifically. Mm. So the evolution in humans, the evolution, the evolution in elves, the evolution in orcs, and whatnot. So kind of... creatures is just kind of everybody, basically. Yeah, basically humanoids, specifically, not like treat like beasts, like dragons or something like that, but, but specifically like you know. The races that have been along for for eons, dwarves, whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. More specifically, his work relates to the sources of specific races' magic. Um, you know, like elves being fey magic, you know, dwarves being primordial magic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of it's all theory based, but a lot of his, you know, a lot of his work is based off of proving certain theories in that regard, based on what you're reading. A lot of it is like long science jargon that just kind of bores you, but you know, this guy's a serious, like, you know, smarty pants, it seemed. Hmm. Anything else of interest? Not really, he's just a teacher. Uh, his rate, my professor, is like average. He's kind of boring, it says, but he's, you know, not a jerk, so. <laughs> Wait, professor rating, you said? Yeah, you guys don't have that in America? Uh, we I do, mean, but. Yeah, but it's like, it seems weird that they're rating them based on how boring they are. It's like. They rate them for stupid reasons on that website, dude. I'm just going to let you in on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll relay that to the rest of the group. Oh. The genetics of magic, huh? Sounds an awful lot like he was studying princes. Princes would fall into it. Are, are there any papers of his or things that relate to princes? No. Princesses? Nothing comes up when you like search the word in his name at all. It didn't look like we he might was be researching. We could be jumping. The... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was about to say we could be jumping the gun here, but. I think all of us are having the same feeling that this isn't not related to the tower. 
not with the not with the timing. I have trouble believing in coincidences these days. If that is the case, maybe your brother would know more. <laughs> he sort of looks down at that. He is his bodyguard, no? I doubt he the told me would tell his own hands. He told me to drop it. We had dinner not that long ago. It seems like he didn't know I was part of the Prince Division. I was sort of weirded out by his behavior. I guess I know why now. I don't want to assume he's related to this. How could he? He's my kid brother. I can understand that, but... If we are suspecting the tower, he is tower adjacent at his hip. He would know more. I know what he's going to fucking tell me, though. Is I mean, it not better to hear it than to live in ignorance with the fear in your heart? I mean, without, without any specific connections to princes or princesses, this guy doesn't seem to have any relation to that sort of thing. It's not really our jurisdiction in that case. Could go sniffing around Thorn Science University, but again, there wouldn't be much reason for us to do so if there's not, no con connection to a prince or princess. King. You had another text message, Gibby. Mm, I'll look at that. There's a kind of like is eating a donut, kind of leans over and looks. What does joke. it say? It's from Lucy. She says, are you interested in the autopsy? Question mark. Text back. Yeah, actually. Um, do Can you send that through to me digitally or do we need to come get it? Uh, she messages back and goes, I can only give you base details. I can't give you the actual report itself. It's just a press release version. Whatever you can give me would be great. Sounds good. Uh, broken arms. Ugh. Write this and, down. And snap neck. Is that it? Uh, arms were broken by blunt force trauma. Neck was broken um, from crushing. Cru so basically crushed head. Crushed neck, neck you mean. Crushed neck, yeah. Head, head's in, like still there, but the neck was completely just popped, gone. Lucy's got me some of the autopsy. Looks like something big and violent just sort of crushed this guy. Broke his arms with blunt force trauma and crushed his neck. Broken it's not really arms magic wise. Defensive wounds. Hmm. Is it weird of me to say that? If a tower was involved with this, it seems a little basic for it to kill him this way. We don't know anything about what a tower's capabilities are. Other than that, apparently, one is enough to handle a whole prince division. And the, the ancients aren't exactly fond of it. Baron got a little shifty when I brought it up, too. Oh, so there is a connection. Right. Your boss has dealings with this thing. Okay, you don't have to be so snappy, but yes, he, well, he doesn't have dealings with it. He just knows kind of secondhand. Did you tell him you met one? I mentioned it, yeah. He just told me to be safe and, you know, keep my wits about me. Mm -hmm. He seemed to know what? what it was, but he seemed to know that it was a threat. Durza would. Is this the sort of handiwork that maybe a, a troll would do? I was thinking about that. I mean, that's just basic information. You need probably a full autopsy to know it. We'd have to look at the body ourselves. Ugh. But. Yeah, maybe. Lucy could only give me these basic details. I mean, a troll, an ogre, an orc could do it. I mean, a big fucker. Lucy points towards Bryant. Like, 
him, you know, just... If you could get me to the body, I could speak with it. Mm. Magic hands. <laughs> Is that a thing that you're allowed to do? No idea. Not should really, probably no. should probably look that up beforehand. Why not though? I'm gonna take a guess. <laughs> different, that probably not. Different different wards. Yes. Heaven's ward. No. <laughs> no. 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 It'd be uh, so useful in finding murderers. You. You're. Hello. Like, who killed you? <laughs> well. <laughs> that guy <laughs> points at him. <laughs> it was you. Wait, what? It was you. Uh -huh. uh. Oh no, my own inaction caused your death. I mean, you I need could, to forgive um, yourself. Never. I mean, I could hang on one sec. Uh, I'll text Lucy back and be like, Lucy, is there any way to get access to the body or more details? What, what kind of permissions would we need to get if that's possible? She returns Spaz back. It's not within our jurisdiction, it doesn't fall under the Prince Division. So, unfortunately, we do not have access to the body. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. About what I, I expected. I, uh, she messaged back and goes, be glad you're not here right now. The place is swarming with people. It's a nightmare. Text her back. Why? Is something in specific is something specific going on? Big homicide. Media wants whatever they can get. Mm. High profile man. He was a very famous professor, apparently. Nice guy. This is sounding more and more like it's uh, not really our thing. And yet it feels like it is, but I'm inclined to think you're right. I, I don't know if we sh if there's a point in moving on this until we get something more, some more information. Which I think I'll charge my phone and ask Jericho. Does any of us have a a charger for him? Yeah, I'd probably could lend him one. I'd say probably uh, Durza might actually. Yeah, Durza would have his. Durza could um. Could uh, Tannis borrow your charger? Yeah, of course. As long as I get it back, he slides it over towards you. Is there like an outlet I put it in or something? Yeah, there's like one on the wall. It's Ooh. again, it's very un modern. Yeah, it's super modern. It's like a just like modern diner. <laughs> does that that does that really annoying thing where it boots up with like a bright white screen that just blows out your your retinas out of the back of your skull? Oh, yes. Yeah. I just, my face is melted off by the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, whenever my I get my power restored, I will text Jericho. Okay. I'll what say... I'll say... Crazy stuff. Okay. Did you hear about what happened at the fair? You choop, sent that off. There's no response. Tannis just stares at the phone for a good long while. Come on. Come on. Say little, something. You see the little dot, dot, dots. And then they disappear and there's no message. Tannis just has this face. Horror. Anger. Disbelief. What do you want to do, Tannis? We could, like I said, we could try checking out the university. I need a minute. He gets up and walks out. Okay. You step outside into the rain. I'll just let it soak him through, pretty much. Yeah, it splatters against the sunglasses. Meanwhile, the rest of you guys are inside. Bryant, do you want to chime in at all? Um, seeing him go outside, Bryant's actually going to get up and follow him. 
all you've noticed him doing this whole time is checking his phone every five minutes. But yeah, I'm going to go follow Tannis. Okay, you step outside and you see Tannis just standing in the rain. What do you say? Nothing. So I know he saw it. Of course he did. He works for the guy. He's not complicit in this. He, he can't be. No, you don't want him to be. But we both know that's different. The only question right now is how deep in is he? And if he can't even respond to you, he's probably doing that to protect you. Fuck! Tannis, I know it sucks, but you do the exact same thing if the roles were switched. He's just, the glasses are off now. He sort of has this look on him like he could snap. Brian is going to turn your shoulders so that you're facing him. And he's going to very lightly put his pointer finger and his middle finger on your chest. Not to push you or anything, but just to kind of make a point. Tannis, there's no speech that I can give you that's going to make you feel better. There's no words of encouragement. I can't make up facts. I can't pretend like I can make it all better. But what I can tell you is that if you snap, if you lose control, you can't help him. But if we think, if we do our own digging, even if this isn't our case, if we figure out what happened, if he was maybe coerced in some way, we can help him. But we can't do that without you. He can help himself without you. So as much as it hurts, as much as you want to punch through a wall, believe me, I've been there. You just got to take this one on the chin and then take the next step which is figuring out what actually happened. All right. Just slowly raises up his hand and brushes it back through his hair. my kid fucking brother man that's my family I know this can't be happening to us not after all we've been through why is this happening to us Bad things don't happen to good people, and good things don't happen to bad people. Things just happen to people, Tannis. And it sucks. But look at me. I need you to believe this, because if you don't believe this, then there's no point. You can help him. The reason why he didn't respond to you is because he knows if he does, it makes things worse. He's giving you a chance to help him. He's a smart kid. You're a smart guy. He's your brother. He knows what he's doing. 
He's helping you so you can help him. That's what this is. This is an opportunity. This isn't the end. But you've got to channel that rage and that pain into determination or we can't help him. You can't help him. And I know you want to. The world isn't out to get you. This is just the next bump in the road, all right? Yeah. I know. Tannis is just seeing flashes of a little boy. Just going through his head. His younger brother, images of him just appearing in his vision. He just shakes his head. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, we are. <sighs> so let's okay. focus up. Come on. I'm just going to kind of slap you on the arm. Meanwhile, inside, Kel, Gibby, and Durza. So, did you two have a nice night last night? Uh, wow. Durza shoots a glance towards well, you. Well, that's a tonal fucking shift. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't just ask people that. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, know, we yeah, listen yeah. to some records and, um, and we just, you know, we just. He's got a great and... collection of records. Oh, yeah, yeah. And stickers. It's great. Um, Can I roll an insight? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Rule two deception with disadvantage because 19. <laughs> yeah, you bastard. Deception. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I have a disadvantage because so of Durzub. So, damn. Yeah. Uh, I was so close. Durzub's a fucking idiot. He doesn't know how to lie. <laughs> so, you know that smile SpongeBob did when he found Squidward eating Krabby Patty? <laughs> That's Kel right now. Just... You two did the horizontal monster mash, didn't you? Oh my god, seriously? What the fuck? Is that what you call it? N no, it, yeah, okay, yeah, sometimes. Is that what, wait, hold on, is that what dragons call or is that what humans call it? Uh, both. Well, I heard this from my father when he was watching this video one time, so I don't okay, know. Okay, all right, we're learning a lot about everyone today, hooray, great. <laughs> but as long as you two were safe and sanitary, it is fine. What the mm. fuck do you mean sanitary? What the fuck? He just points. I'm a doctor, you dum dum. Oh right, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gibby, we were, we were Gibby just has her head so low, it's nearly like, touching the table, just like, oh my god. Jerusalem just kind of pats your back, just gently, like, we're safe. He just kind of juts ahead towards you, Cal. He's like, we're <laughs> safe, and it was great. It was a nice time. <laughs> just Gibby looks up. She likes turned red. Like, yeah. How was your <laughs> night, Cal? <laughs> yeah, well, how was your night? Very uneventful, unlike yours. <sighs> okay, all right. But <laughs> I'm glad point... you two are getting along. I'm glad we're getting along, too. It might yeah. be best, though. Gibby, respectfully, might not want to bring this up with your superiors. <laughs> well, I mean, it's technically not their business anyway. I would hope they wouldn't ask like that. Still, no offense, Kel. Yeah. Hmm? No, no offense, Cal. Hopefully, hopefully the, hopefully the chief wouldn't suddenly ask me like that in the middle of the office. That is fair. I doubt he would. <laughs> <laughs> he is very mm, reserved. Hello, darkness, oil. Friend just starts playing, and this is like. <laughs> so it's like a combination of all around me. At this just point, Brian and Tana's come back, and Gibby's just got this look on her face. Like, yeah, you like guys that walk anime, in. That <laughs> anime, like, like your body and the look. temperature drops. Oh, yeah. Durzib is red, like, just red in the face. It's coming through the green somehow, and Gibby's just like a lobster as you guys walk in.
<clears throat> We're looking into this. Okay. Where do you want to start? Where should we start? I think there's a really easy place to start. The university, right? He's I been think there. We can go. Mm, I'd say we go a step further. What do you got in mind? We talk to the chief. Why would the chief know anything? He's, it's not his department. No, not about this murder. About why the tower went after the last Prince Division. You think this shit isn't all related? Gabe would probably be good to inform him that we had an encounter. Yeah, we should at least do that. As far as this murder goes, checking the university would be good, and also conferring with any colleagues the geneticists would have had. I know what you're we researching. We can do that on our own, but we can do both. This is too much of a coincidence. Yeah, and I don't believe in coincidences. It's related. Like I said, not anymore. Well, I think that's my cue to leave. I'd rather not go to a police station uninvited, which tends to be the only way I show up to them. <laughs> uh, that was a joke. I'm leaving. Goodbye. He stands up. By the way, Derzim. Freezes and turns around. Tell your boss I said hi. Uh, yeah. He kind of cocks his head a bit confused. Uh, I'll just touch his arm and be like, all right, be safe. He kind of leans down. He kisses you on the neck real quick. Or kiss. kiss <laughs> oh, and I'll be like, and I'll be like human kiss and kiss him on the forehead. Just the no. sound of a tree branch cracking. Is <laughs> Tannis's, Tannis's, <laughs> Tannis's eyes snap over to this <laughs> development. Take care. He kind of leaves. Um, by hey. the way, he freezes and turns. Tell your boys to lay off the Agnar. Roll an intimidation check. Boy, here we go. Ooh, great. 16. You watch as Durzab actually is a bit knocked by, by the, the strength of your voice. He kind of stops for a second and goes, Yeah, we'll do. Kind of gives a nod. Take care, Gibby. Um, get home safe. Don't. It's raining, so just be careful. <laughs> I will. You too. Steps out. Bing, bing, bing. Brian's going to tilt his head at Tannis. Lay off Yagnar, huh? He tried to stick up for my kid. Got his fucking fingers cut off because he wouldn't kidnap a child. Baron Dramar can go to hell for all I'm concerned. Well, on that much we agree. Just sort Brian's of look down at Gibby. <laughs> Brian's gonna take his fist and just kind of tap your chest. Chance, you look at Gibby? Yeah, just look at her briefly and then grab my stuff. So are we doing this investigation or what? Let's do it. Yeah. So where are you guys going? I would say that we can probably talk to the chief as a group on the way to the university. So we You're can going to talk to Marcus Roche just to confirm, correct? Correct. Yeah. I, he's, he's the, the commander, I guess, because I know that she is the chief yeah. above him. But yeah, yeah. not Tiger up. Yeah, Roche is a captain. Yeah, yeah Roche is your captain. Yeah, the chief. The chief is the Tabaxi man. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll go up the fucking ladder if I have to, but I'll start with the captain. His name is Riddle. Tyben Roche. Riddle is the. Yes. Oh, oh Roche. About the, yeah, yeah. Roche the police the chief is is Tyben Riddle. That's that's yes. the, that's the police chief of the. Tyben yes. Got it. Okay, so you guys make your way to the precinct. Make your way inside. There is a blue of reporters um, that seem to be making their way out, um, leaving the space. Different news outlets and things like that asking about the murder uh, as you guys make your way inside of the department with your badges. They're very yeah, thorough unless, about checking them these times. Unless anybody stops Brian in particular, he's going to march straight towards the captain's office. Okay. 
You do. So you, you walk towards the division office, the Prince division labeled on the outside. Going in. Okay. You open up the door. Uh, inside is Lucy. She's got a stack of paperwork. She goes, oh, hi. You guys come in kind of um, late. Hello, Lucy. Hi, hi Kel. Hi, Gibby. Um, Bryant. Tannis. The you captain guys here. A little... uh, he's in a meeting right now. Um, Where? Well, I, I, Officer Brian, I can't tell you that. You can't tell me where he's in a meeting? He'll be back in like 20 minutes. I'll get you coffee. We can wait you're that all, long. You yeah, are fine. all scaring me. You all look like you're going to kill someone right now, making me a little nervous. We'll let you know if that develops. Okay. What? I'll Ryan, don't, go get don't freak that. out, Gibby. Uh, you're Gibby. I'm Lucy. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Don't freak out, Lucy. It's okay. I'll get the coffee. You watch as he slips out the door and closes the door. Go ahead and everybody roll a perception check for me. Eight. Here I go. Four, 17. 14. Okay. Uh, as you guys are sitting around, the office is, your desks are cleanly. Um, Lucy's desk is a nightmare. Oh, no. Um, as it always is. It always is. Poor girl. Um, but there is some stuff on the captain's desk. Um, there's just some folders, um, that you, you notice, Tannis. Um, there's, there's a folder that's on the table, and then there's also a book that's on the table as well. What is the title of this book? Symbiotic Relationships. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not good, right? Is there a bookmark in it? Um, yes, there is. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna... Do it. I'm gonna grab it and look at the back and see if there's like a synopsis or something of this. Uh, it seems to be accounts of symbiotic relationships occurring in nature, specifically between animals okay. and plants. I'll, I'll flip over to the bookmark and... Okay. Uh, it appears to be a chapter about um, specific uh, leaf cutter ants that cut down leaves and feed fungal chambers underneath their ant hills to produce food for themselves. Huh. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll go to the, the table of contents and just okay. scan to see if there's an interesting section. Uh, it's all like, there's, there's one that's really weird, which is like a mouse that shits into like a, <laughs> this is actually a real thing, by the way. It's okay. a, it's like a type of forest mouse that poops inside of like one of those, um, carnivorous plants to produce nectar that it eats. Stuff like that. And it just looks up briefly and stares into nothingness in thought and then looks back down. Yeah, it's all, it's all similar such things. Is there any human type of deals in here? No, not at all. It's like elephants right. and birds, crocodiles. So it's all and just birds. animal stuff. Yeah, and there's like sucker fish and sharks, stuff like that. It's all it's all very scientific recounting and, and you know, mm -hmm. observations. Stuff like I'll that. I'll put it back down and uh, leave the bookmark where it is. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try and stealth it? You look through it. If you want to, you'll have to roll a stealth check. Okay. Okay. Here I go. Seven. Seven. Okay. I, I just put I just put it back, but it's upside down. Uh, there is also <laughs> the folder on the table. I grab that. Okay. Uh, it is Samuel George's folder. Huh. Are there uh, any new well, developments? Why do I know that name? Samuel George, Samuel George. you guys ever took, the little boy. Little oh, boy, yeah. Right. Aw, oh, it's been ages. The one I, gave the I got, with the I got mauled by a yeth hound for that boy. Yep. One that was immune to all your attacks. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't remind me. You want to look through the folder, or you just want to leave it where it is? I'm going to look through it. Okay. Uh, roll an investigation check for me. Oh, boy. One of these ones, huh? Guidance. Here I go. Her! Any second now. Ooh. Any second. Oh, here we go. Natural one! Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow. Connor, you talk Friendly all that or... shit on Wednesday. I'm just saying. No, this is why I talk all that shit on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like to look over your shoulder and take a peek? Sure. I, I, I look at the folder. I'm like, wait a minute. 
I forgot how to I read. Can't read. <laughs> <laughs> For a brief moment, he he, he suffered a, sl a slight brain tremor. Uh, You're thinking too much about the, the the mice that poop into plants for nectar. This appears to be in draconic. <laughs> Kel? He just thinks. He just thinks. Really? <laughs> for real nectar? Thing. Yeah, I look yeah. over his shoulder. Yeah, all you guys can. You guys all like like look over like you know you're right. watching your boy. Come on, give me do it. We see no, like you got it. You're we, good. we see him do like the Silent Hill two thing when you save and your and your character probably starts drooling on themselves while they're in the neath the ether. Uh, <laughs> He's like, oh, what's he looking at that makes him look like that? Investigation. Uh, eh, Eleven. Okay. You got it, Kel. <clears throat> okay, you're not gonna roll, Brian. No, Brian's got other things on his mind. He wouldn't be looking at the folder. Okay. Well, you did a five, uh, and yet somehow <laughs> Pan wow. failed that. And yet uh, he just um, he just very, saw the he just saw sad. the photo. He saw the photo of Samuel George, and he had another and flashback went, Aw. when when he's his brother was right little. Now. Oh shit! Never mind. He just, <laughs> he just couldn't think about anything else. Uh, it looks like the address was updated for Samuel George's file. Hmm. Yeah, the Aww, they, they move somewhere good. It yes. looks like they moved to the Heavens Ward, an apartment Dad. building there. Yeah. It is good to keep these sorts of things on file in case anything happens ever again. Uh, you'd be near your footsteps approaching as you guys have the folder open on your police captain's desk. Lose it. Gail will move back to his desk. Everyone roll stealth checks for me. Um, ah! Brian's not going to move. Okay. Bryant wasn't looking, so he doesn't count. Yeah, Six. Bryant wasn't there, technically. 14. Okay. 15. Gibby and uh, Tannis, you slap the folder shut, you put it back on the desk, and you kind of shuffle away. Kel, like, jumps for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> he just jumps in place. He like, he, like, does, like, get down, Mr. President, and just, ugh, like, launches himself and scrambles back to his feet as Lucy opens the door with, like, a tray of coffees. <laughs> and she's like, uh, uh, um... I'm sorry. I tripped on my own feet. Okay, roll roll a deception check. <laughs> oh, Lucy. Oh no. Fifteen. Yeah, easy. Oh, um, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I I know my appearance is very frightening and threatening, and and can put fear into the hearts of men. But um, I won't hurt you. I promise, Kel. She kind of smiles. Kel banana cat faces, because that's his problem, not hers. <laughs> um, oh, I shit, brought, too real. I brought you all coffees. You look like you could use a pick-me-up. Yeah, thanks, Lucy. Here you go. Thanks. Kel will pick himself up the floor and take one. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> um, She just kind of sits down at her desk and sips. It's very awkward and silent in here. By the way, um, mm. I heard from a little birdie that the Prince Division might be getting a check. Oh, well, to we... potentially put towards uh, new vehicles or something? We did have a rather generous donation from Acidback come in. Yeah, there might be another one coming in. For oh, help good. with the uh, bank the other day. You know that call we responded to. Um. Oh, the Ivan and uh, Bank thing. Yes. Oh, uh, Ivan or his associates. Big. Okay. Um, I will keep that in mind. Of course, the chief has to approve amounts, and um, again with with caution, accepting donations from dragons is a bit um. Have to be a bit careful on that one. <laughs> I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, though I, I must say, she turns. We've received regular calls from Taryn Sivum, and she seems to be doing very well. Um, also, uh, Roscoe, uh, Mister, I forgot his last name. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, chicken and waffles. Sure, I know he had a name. Uh. Um, is it Roscoe O'Malley? I can't remember his name. Oh, um, um, the the scraggly guy. We say. Yeah, the guy you saved from the blood blood. Uh, thing. I thought it was just literally Roscoe, but I think I wrote it down. Wait, hang on. He did have a full name. We heard it after the case. Damn name? you, Control F. I wish to look up my notes. <laughs> I can I can feel Shahalan potentially messaging me. Really? Pekinsky? I didn't write. Was it Pekinsky? Oh, Rocco. Pekinsky, yes. Rocco Pekinsky. 
Rocco Pekinski. Okay, yeah, that was the name. Rocco. Oh, uh, that it's Rocco. Rocco. That's why. Okay. That's right, Rocco. I hope he has My a bad. modern life now. Right, because we yes, well, that's the joke. Damn it, you beat me to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hate it, hate it, kill. I hate that. That's scary. Oh my um, god, it was Lucy. so. <laughs> that was really accurate. And that's yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> that's like Connor Hank Hill levels of accurate, and I cannot handle it. Um, you watch when this kind of character. Stop. Um, <laughs> you watch as uh, you watch as Lucy kind of goes. Um, Mr. Uh, Pekinski registered with us as well, and uh, he he seems to be doing great. Um, he enjoyed the liveliness, although um, you'd think a man like him would. Well, I mean, hmm, she kind of shrugs. He what liked the excitement. He's oh. kind of leans forward. He's kind of like Bryant, who really likes the TV stuff. Oh. I see. Oh, I see. Said it would make a good pub story. She kind of shrugs. But he's well. Uh, hospital sol solved away. He's good. And he's in a registry now, so hopefully he won't get snatched up again. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. You hear footsteps approach as the door opens up and you see uh, Captain Roche kind of enter inside with a folder under his arm. He kind of stops and looks around. Hello. Hello, Captain. Hello, Lauren. Lauren Gibby. You all have dour looks on your faces. We have yeah, something to, to talk chat. about. He closes the door. And he walks over to his desk, notes the book, and he flips it back upright. He sits down on his desk. No doubt you've heard about the murder at the fair by now. The homicide department's taking care of that one. They're not a prince, so it's not our jurisdiction. Right, but you might be interested in who else was at that fair. A tower. The tower. A Mr. Kine. So, there is a lot of emotions that immediately happen when you say those words. There's shock, there's a swallowing of the throat, there's fear, there's consideration, fear again, thought. There's a moment where you, you think he's going to leap up and yell at you, but it's swallowed again. And you watch as Lucy kind of like stands up, she just jolts upwards and she goes, um, uh. He does not know who we are. There's no indication he knows what we do. Supposedly. It was a chance encounter at the fair. Kine. Supposedly. You said we his should... name was Kine. Yes, his name is Kine. He said he was not interested in Miss Sivum or Miss Gibby. That he already has one. He turns to you, Gibby, and goes, You were there? We were all going to have a night there, and he just was just there. We didn't know he was going to be there. Who was with him? Sit down. All four of you, sit down now. I will sit down. Yeah, we'll do so. He was already sitting. Yep. He was flanked by two bodyguards. One of which is Kelly my brother. Tennis. Is my brother. Was there a woman with him? There no, was, sir. right? No, no, there was. There wasn't. Two men. Oh. It was just. It was just it was a two guy. It was your brother. Thought the, guard. thought the other one was a woman. My bad. Nope, that was a man. No, sir. It was just the bodyguards, and they were both male. What the fuck is Selton doing walking around? Selton. That was his old name. Now it's Kine, I guess. century ago, it would have been a different name. When he saw Gibeon, he started drooling. He points a finger towards you. You are fucking lucky that you got out. Yeah, it would have been real nice if we had info on this guy. He's not supposed to be here. He should have been gone for another hundred fucking years. Hmm. 
It's cost them iron and breeze rot were terrified of him. Rightfully they sensed so. him coming. We rightfully fucking saw. We believe that this tower is the one that took Mr. Breeze Roth's friend. The prince. Breeze Roth friend said with. it was. What was the name of his friend? Old Trimbley. A prince from a lifetime ago. They went to the same college. The previous, I know, I know. He rubs his eyes and sits back in his chair. I didn't want to tell you much. I wanted to protect you, but it seems like now. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be here, Bryant. They disappear for a hundred years. Yeah, and now it's back. So now it's our problem. So spill the fucking beans. Let's focus. I don't know what towers are. No one fucking knows what a tower is. When we started this division, we thought we didn't even know they existed. Have you ever seen those stories, old human stories, about princes and princes being inside of towers guarded by dragons? Yes, they're, they're awful. So yes. Pissed. The tower wasn't a structure, it was a thing in history. So, towers... When you say locked in, what do you mean? To me, it sounds like, what, do they eat princes and princesses? They farm them. They keep them, and they eat off of them over and over and over again. And it's not like the dragons. It's not a proximity-based siphoning. It's a physical one. It's blood. They drink blood. This close to killing their victim. Each time. Exsanguination is terribly painful. Gibby doesn't feel well. She's like, he said he wasn't interested in me or Taryn because he had one already. He does. Wait. Sir, do, do you know who he has? Why do you think the previous division died, Lorne Gibby? They tried to retrieve her, didn't they? They tried to stop him. Was she was a member of the old Prince Division. No. She was a young woman named Molly. We humans don't live that long. 80, 100 years at the most. What happens when that 100 years is up? He goes looking for another one. Well, you said, do, does he just go looking for another one or does he, what, hibernate or something? He feasts for 100 years, eating constantly. And then when the prince or princess dies, he goes looking for more. Kind, Salton, whatever he is now, kind. He's been around forever. Towers don't die. Blood is the currency of life. I would wager that. By feasting the way he does, he's extending his own. But why would he need bodyguards? Serious ones, too, if he has Tannis' brother at his side. I'm, I am more interested as to why he's wandering around the city right now. I can only assume something must have happened to this Molly. But he said he already has one, which is why he wasn't interested in Gibby or Miss Sivum. Yeah. Gibby, that drooling just makes your skin crawl. I mean, I know that it doesn't make sense because you're right. Even if she was unfortunately reaching the end of her usefulness, then he would have been interested in me or Taryn. But again, he, he said he wasn't, so... 
Molly's seen... probably alive. I had to assume that Molly's fucking alive. He doesn't kill four fucking people and plus to just lose someone like that. It was... When he noticed he was drooling, he seemed annoyed. There is still like much and more we do not know about Prince, Princess, the Source, and the connection with the Towers. We need to know more. Neither do I. Is that something this geneticist was looking into, perhaps? Since he was studying the origins of magic? He was specifically studying sorcerers and wizards and why orcs and other such people can't cast magic. I don't know. It just... it just seems like too much of a coincidence, sir. Tower shows up at the same carnival we're at, and then the same night, this geneticist is found dead. As we've said we don't believe in coincidence coincidences anymore. There's no way Kine isn't involved. Maybe this doctor stumbled onto something that was either useful to the tower or harmful to him. Either way, good reason to kill him. Bosco, you're a bit quiet. Could you? Bump you're extremely ahead? quiet. You're extremely. Yeah, you, well, you haven't been until now. Yeah. Lovely. How's that? There better. you go. Way better. Okay. Can you repeat what you said? Sure. Maybe this geneticist stumbled onto something that either harms the tower or helps it. Either way, if he wants it or wants him dead, he's dead. Take the research and use it, or take the research and destroy it, depending upon whether it's useful or not. Well, until we prove that correlation, that case is not going to be released to us it's in Homicide's hand right now. Either way, it was somebody who was studying princess and princesses, so I think that's our jurisdiction. The professor had no connection to that. That was ruled out in our meeting, which means we're not involved. But, well, I... but if you find anything, I am willing to listen. But you need to all know this. I know what our purpose in the Prince Division is to do. Trust me, I know. But I can't do this again. I with all due starting... respect, with all due res go ahead. He bites his mouth and just kind of, just starting to like you guys. Sir, with all due respect, they have Tannis's brother. So if you can't handle how this might end, then it's time to retire. I'll talk to the chief. If the tower is here, if it is in the city, there are many people who will want to know about that. Kel will kind of fish around in his pocket for that card he received, and he will make a mental note to make a call later. Captain Roach kind of taps his fingers on the desk. He seems very agitated, but justifiably so. We'll have to contact Rigagon, the Fae Queen. As many ancients are willing to show up. Um, Maybe I have... even Baron Dermar. I mean, I, I don't know if you need it, but I fish out the business card he gave me. I did meet Rigagon. He kind of looks at you like, what? Like, looking at you like... And yeah, I he, was, can... he was nice. <laughs> I mean, you don't maybe need his information, but I have the card if you need it. No, he, he, we know him. And I can contact Ivan the Ivory if you wish. Uh, let the police contact Ivan. Let the police contact the... We are the police. I meant the chief. It's... This is a bit more, you know, outside of our pay grade. We have to notify Rigagon first, and Rigagon can notify the rest. What? Why him first, sir? We're in the Heaven's Ward, aren't we? If we're going to have guests here, we should probably make sure that the person who lives here knows about it. Fair enough. In the meantime, we should probably figure out what that doc was working on very specifically. See if it has any links to something that this tower guy might like. Michael or Bryant. Michael Bryant. What? what? That case is not in our jurisdiction right now. We need to wait. The autopsy isn't even done yet. A full investigation hasn't started yet. We just found a body last night. What can we look into, sir? Is there anything? 
Just go home and get some rest. I'll call you in the morning. Will you be all right? I've been all right so far. Arguably. Kind of looks at you, Brian. Insight? Yeah, go ahead. 16. You've always kind of chastised him for his position and his mental state, and he just kind of gives you a look, you know. Mm -hmm. If you need anything, sir, let us know. I'll be fine. Gibby. Yes, sir. For my own peace of mind. Don't go walking around by yourself for a while, okay? Yes, sir. That goes for your friend, uh, Miss Sibum, as well. You might want to... <laughs> I don't they think know. Kostemeyer would let her out of... Yes, Kostemeyer is aware. I don't think Kostemeyer is going to let her out of her sight. They were but there. I will, I will relay your message to her nonetheless. Right. You're dismissed. Just go home. When I get the autopsy, I'll send it to you. Understood. Lucy? She's like, I have to fill out a request form? Yes. I... Uh, okay. <laughs> she, watches, she goes over and grabs another slip of paper and puts it on top of the pile and starts writing on it. Sorry, Lucy. Oh, it's okay. I Again, I prefer doing work for our division than everybody else's. And she looks over at the giant stack of paper. Tyler's putting me to work. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> I do not like Tyler. I don't like him either. Okay, you guys head out? Do we have a, real quick before we leave, is there any way we can ac access like a database from our own computers? Uh, in the office, yes. It is not a uh, thing you can take with you. That is actually yeah. really against the rules. You are not allowed to take information like that home with you as an officer in any regard. i just like to look one person up. Okay. Just to see. Uh, Jericho Tannis. Jericho Tannis is an elf, so he cannot be a prince. Oh, we only have information on prince. Because it's only prince, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I figured we had, like, a like a access to a whole database. Uh, Lucy has access to the full beta database. I'll you talk can, to Lucy then before we'll we leave. It, but it will take her time. Yeah. Just to ask for permission for that information. Lucy. Um, yes. Before we go, can you look up information on someone for me? Um, I could see if I could ask. I, I mean, again, I, I've told uh, Gibby before that we can't just look up whoever. It has to be pertinent to, to case information. Very well might become pertinent. Uh... If you can't, I understand. Yeah, it's a bit tricky there. Um, I just like some peace of mind. How about, about this? I'll I'll look it up, but it's a conflict of interest. If it's really bad, then I'll see. If it's nothing, then I'll let you know. Okay. Fair. I don't want to lose my job, but I don't want you to lose sleep. Oh, meditation, meditation. If I can help it. I understand. Keep your chin up, Mr. Tannis. It, it won't be that bad, I, I promise. I hope you're right. Jericho always said, positive thinking. <laughs> so, you guys head out? Um, I want to hang back just a second. I'm gonna hang back and and approach the captain. Sir? Everybody else, are you guys leaving? Yeah, I'm gonna talk to yeah. the way out, but I'll let Gibby have her moment. Kel? Sir? 
Kel is leaving, but he still wants to make that phone call. Okay. Yes, Officer Gibby. <sighs> um, feel free not to answer this, but I should just... Is this Molly someone you knew? We knew her for a bit. We, um... We tried to protect her for a very long time. I see. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. He goes to say something, but then doesn't and goes to his paperwork. Can I inside him? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. 18. Thank you. You got the sense he wanted to add some information on, but just was like, just like, nah, it's not important right now. Just kind of holds it back. Okay. I'll leave it at that and step outside. Close the door behind you. As you guys are standing in the hallway, Lady the Minotaur just kind of scoots by and she's like, oh, excuse me. And just kind of moves past you guys. Would any of you be okay with um, getting me home? I will. Thanks. Whenever you're ready, I, I can hang around if you need to do something still. Tannis, I got a question for you. Shoot. I know you're very much about following protocol and staying within your lane, but as you can tell, I've never really seen the world as good, bad, or somewhere in the fucking middle, following the law or not. Stupid. It's not black and white, it's a bunch of gray. So, let's say we don't get the approval from the captain. Let's say that they try to hold us up while they do a whole nother investigation. It's your brother's life on the line, so if you want to toe the line, I'll toe the line. But if you don't, I'm more than happy to do whatever the fuck we need to do to figure out what's going on. I just want you to know it's your call. Michael, this is my family we're talking about. Prince Division be damned, I will do whatever it takes to protect my family. Then you tell me where we're going and we'll do it. For now, I think we don't have enough information to really pursue any leads other than looking into what the professor was doing. Why he was at the fair in the first place would be a good start. Something tells me that his presence there wasn't entirely a coincidence either. Yeah, it fits. So, Tannis, you drive Gibby home. No yeah. checks necessary. You know where people live now. The rest of you guys make your way home. Uh, Tannis. Yeah. Nefane was dropped off by uh, Mama Rukigi. Okay, I probably would have. <laughs> I probably would have gone to pick her up as well. Yeah, you go and pick her up, and uh, she comes home with sugar cookies. She she's learned to bake from Mama Rukigi. She's learned she's learning some very interesting lessons from that woman. Um, which both both impress and terrify you. And terrifies me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I made these sugar cookies, and you can bake them into shapes like this, but if you cook them too much, you're going to get brown edges like this. And also, Mama Rikiki told me that if someone grabs my shoulder like this, if I twist their hand this way, it breaks them. <laughs> I sort of, I was sipping some tea at that, and I just go... <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I, try to, I try to wipe it out of my beard. <clears throat> uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is right. Yep. Also, my teacher says I can bring the snake. Well, guess you're bringing the snake then, kid. Yes, Mr. Bubbles. She runs to your room. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Gibby, you get home. Your apartment's a little still. You weren't there the other night, so it's a bit, you know, stagnant. But you walk in and uh, go to bed comfortably. So Frank, yeah, I'll just be like, I'm done with the day. Goodbye. You just you just do that gif of the person walking over the bed and just collapsing into the bed. You know, that, but also like the one where he just gets up, he doesn't even, it's the person who just walks in and just plots onto the floor face first, just like. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Bryant, you get home. Kobe's asleep. He's like I'm curled a, up in a ball. He's got the right idea. I'm going to be like my lizard bro and pass the fuck out. <laughs> and Cal, you head home. But you want to make a phone call when you get there, I assume. Yep. Okay. Going to uh, pull out that card and dial in the number for Ivan. All right. At Ivan Towers, an anime song blasts out of a phone speaker. <laughs> he can kill mosquitoes to fly away. Hello. Hello, sir. This is Kel Zorin. Calling rather late at night. My sincerest apologies for that, but I have information I would prefer not to go through the grapevine for you. Fair enough. I didn't expect um, communication so quickly. Yes, my apologies, but uh, I was told to let the chief handle this, but if this is pertinent to you, you need to know. I assume police chief. Yes. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Captain Tiger? <laughs> Captain Riddle, right? What was his yes. name? Yes, Captain yeah. Riddle. That's or Chief name. Riddle. But, uh, the tower <laughs> is about the city. You watch as his voice, it was kind of like light and, you know, dancey, kind of goes, Very good to know. I appreciate he, this update. He calls himself Kain. Pine Towers, is it now? Interesting. Thank you, Kel. You are quite welcome, sir. Appreciate it. Beep. And Kel will put the phone down and get ready for bed. Okay. You guys all go to sleep at about like 10 o'clock. It's been a long day for all of you. Um, you guys all nestle into bed, except for Tannis. You, you meditate. And as yep. night comes in, all of your phones go off. <laughs> meow, Look at meow, it immediately. meow, 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 meow. It's like it doesn't even get past the first meow. I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, I'm serious. Brian is like the fuck. Three thirty a.m. All right, you begrudgingly answer. Um, uh, uh, this is Lucy, officers. Yes, hello, Lucy. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's so early. Um, we just got a call from the necromancy division. There's been a prince murdered downtown. You're wanted in the central ward immediately. Murdered? Necromancy division. Her, she sounds a bit frazzled. Is this... Can I do, like, an insight on her voice to see if... Sure, this... go ahead. Roll an insight. Yeah. 18. It is Lucy. It is absolutely Lucy. No, I'm not checking for that. I'm, I'm, she's, oh. she, I am checking to see what her mental state is. Yeah, she, she seems a bit more. Uh, kind of you get the sense that this frantic is not something than usual. That is common, probably in the division. Right. She said Central Ward, didn't she? Yeah. Central Ward, and also the Necromancy divisions involved. That's why I was like Necromancy. The fuck? They did say they would send things our way if something came up. They um, did, they, but that's still rare that they would do that. They um they they called just now and told me to notify you. And you're sure it's them? I'm sure it's them. I could recognize Ryer Fenton's smarmy voice anywhere. Hey, let's go. Let's be um, I'll text you the location on your phone. Tannis, oh. could you grab Gibby? Right. The the homicide team is already on their way just to secure the, well, the scene of the crime. So. I'm out. Let's do it. You guys are going to take a point of exhaustion by the dawn. Just a heads up. Um, what about me? Including you. You didn't get a full rest in, so. I didn't get a full four hours? Uh, let's be ten. Actually, yeah, you would have gotten a full rest. The rest of you guys have not. You did not get a full eight hours. Uh, you guys meet up with each other and make your way to the central ward. Um, it's easy enough to find where you need to go as you see a perimeter made up of police cars and- uh, Monty, sorry, well, what does the point of exhaustion do? Uh, point of exhaustion, uh, the first stage is, I believe- Disadvantage on everything. Everything. No, 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 no. You, like, don't get it, point, you don't get it yet, by the way. You don't have it now. If you basically, like, as time progresses, because you're not taking a long rest, you will have a point of exhaustion by the dawn, essentially. You have okay. disadvantage on ability checks. 
Oh, it's so not like completely. No. Like, is it just one or two rolls, or it's all of them? So all until, of them you, until you, you don't take a long rest. Until you take a long rest, you don't have that right now. But I'm just warning you, as time progresses, that is something that can happen. So okay, just gotcha. keep that in mind. All right, so you guys are all loaded up in the car, making your way, and you see currently the lights flickering and a bunch of officers, the silhouettes of them walking through. The lights are dancing across the streets where the water has hit from the previous day's rain. You see them currently rolling out tape. Hello, officers. We're with the print division. I assume you park the car and you get out? (laughs) Yes, we did that. Uh, Also, you get out? Also, I would have I would have left a note for Nefane if she was still sleeping or something. Yeah, you you leave and like she's like dad, and you're just like sorry, I gotta go. Um, you make your way there. You get out of the vehicle. You step out. The air is cold. Like it is not winter, but it, it's enough to like really shiver you to the bone. Um, and it oh, is fine. wet. It's pretty miserable. Um, you guys I'm make your sure. way over. And you guys approach with your badges. Uh, you see Tyler there. Um, and you see a few other officers as well. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, you watch as the officer kind of walks over and goes, uh, hey, we, uh, we have the guy who found the body if you want to talk to him, but, um, he kind of points over. You see a tarp over a form, and you see Abu Laga and Ryer Fenton standing there as well. Tannis, the witness is all yours. You're good with the word shit. I am? Or Gibby, one of you two. I can do it. I'll take point. That image is not loading. Yeah, it's not loading. It is not. You might need to refresh. Hold on. Roll 20 is also a little slow lately. It's been slow with the all day. They were having some traffic issues as I come to understand it. Oh, Jesus. I shouldn't have refreshed. I know I shouldn't have refreshed either. Oh, God. (laughs) What have we done? I will not. Mistakes were made. I uh, I did not refresh. I'm going to stay in the game. You're smart. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to refresh either. I'm, I'm good. That's fair. That's fair. Ooh. Ooh. You can manually throw it up. I did, yeah. I threw it up. Yeah. Um, you can also grab it. Um, I am going to go talk to Necromancy Division while Tannis and Gibby go talk to the witness. As you... Well, I'd say as a group right now, before you do oh, anything yeah. and split up, um, I'd recommend that as your DM. Uh, you guys approach <laughs> Abu Laga and Ryer Fenton. Ryer Fenton is currently just kind of like, kind of crouching over the over the body and taking a look at things. And Abu Laga kind of turns and goes, "Good morning." Good morning, officers. Officers. <laughs> officers. Take it you're not much of night owls. I mean, it's I been used a busy be. few days. Yeah, that. We got an interesting one for you. He watches Ryer Fenton kind of, Avilaga nods to Ryer Fenton, Ryer Fenton grabs the tarp and pulls it off, and it is a body you recognize. No. Please what? don't. Please Who don't. Who is it? Is it Rocco? It is the body of Cody Mason. Oh my god, the oh, werewolf girlfriend? No, the guy no, the, who the had prince the quick one with the quicklings. The quickling. Oh, the quickling guy. Yep, he is face back. down. On I was like, the we don't ground. know a lot of princes. Fuck. Pale and dead. And that is where we're gonna end the session for tonight. Ah, oh, fuck. Why Cody though. We did his side quest. He had no further use. <laughs> oh, it's so horrible. Bye, Austin. It was me. Austin. Bye, Bye, Austin. Austin. It was me. I got angry that I got stabbed by quicklings. <laughs> Fuck. I was like, Cody, wait, what was the fucking... What the mind? hell? Yeah, I didn't. Even, I forgot like about him. I was like, the only other prince we know that we know is the werebore's girlfriend was a princess. Cody Mason. Fucking Cody Mason. I don't even... Wow. Hang on. Let me was see. Was he doing in the can... war? Because he was way out beyond the He was way on the boonies, wasn't he? I he worked in the city, though. He yeah. worked in the city. I guess. Yeah. Oh, this is so dark. That was so long ago. <laughs> oh, Episode Jesus. 27. What was that? Episode 27. 27 What's happening? Right? What? What? Oh, no. Hey. What's wrong? Hello? What oh. is happening? Oh. His audio is playing back on him. 
It was Audacity. My whole. It was Audacity. He's fucking with you. They're like, we're going to play this over the whole stream why again. Come, why, why is it coming out of my speakers? I don't that. know. It does that sometimes. I had to switch it over to my wireless headphones or else it comes out of my speakers uh -huh. too. Well. I was, I was hearing my own voice. I was like, shit, shit, that's uh -huh. happening. Uh -huh. So if we never did his side quest, we would not have recognized him. True. That's I true. think. I think. I, I'm putting on my tinfoil hat. If we uh, never did his side quest, he wouldn't be dead. He wouldn't be dead. I think this is absolutely related. But I this think is... it would have been a different prince or princess in that case. Like Terran Sevim or like Terran Rock Rock or yeah. Samuel George. No. If we found oh, Samuel no. George, that would have been dark as hell. I don't go I don't... there. What did, yeah, what did Cody there. do again for work? I'm trying to remember. He? Did we What's ask about that? I don't know. I we were just... Like... I feel like we'd learn, I mean, we could look it up. I don't think we database. learned that he's working Oh, he was, a, he was a land surveyor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What would that have to do with anything? If it does have anything to do with anything. You start figuring out what they all have in common with each other. Mm. That's how you put it together. Or he was Shit. just unlucky. But Don't then again, what do we say list. about coincidences right now? Well, we're going to have to fuck up some more quicklings, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Inflict wounds intensifies. Turns out it's hey, man. Turns oh, we're, out it has we're level five now, motherfuckers. You're not ready for this shit. Yeah. Turns Carbon out it has nothing to do with brothers. the tower. It has nothing to do with the tower. No. It's just the quick. Really if he was us. killed by quicklings, that'd be amazing. I know that'd be so messed up. Prince Division, welcome to your fourth case. Oh boy, hey. I'm excited. That's I want to go. I want to go again. Wait. So we're gonna Prince Division next week, right? No gateway. No, no. no. Yeah. We got gateway I mean, next week. Got gateway next week. Ah! Got a lot of theory crafting y'all can start doing. Oh Jesus! Now I have to go through my notes and be like, all right, what are the ties? Oh, Trimbley. It's gonna be cliffhangers from now on, isn't it? Well, oh, this sure is fuck was. Speaking of cliffhangers, let's not leave these folks on one. Let's tell everybody where they can find you. Arkov, where can they find you? Stop smiling! I can't help it! Stop! <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way of approaching it. I just start fucking well, smiling. I fucking heard you! <laughs> oh, that O'Malley guy you're thinking of was a Duragar. Oh, yeah. okay. There you go. Uh, you guys like this? I hope you guys like the session. By the way, I know we hopped. Oh yeah, great session. I don't. I don't mind but... sitting here being quiet if, if the story is good around everybody. Like I, I love listening mm -hmm. to everybody else do stuff. I enjoy. I enjoy playing Kel when he's in trouble. Yeah, it's a different side of his personality. No, it was well, I great. I was just like, I was just like, Ivan wants to speak with you, but I'm like, I think Ivan would just want to speak with <laughs> Kel though. He wouldn't want to speak with everybody. He would want to speak with Kel. Yeah, of course, your, mo your, your mother is a lot like my dad, where he just assumes the worst when someone important wants to talk to me. Yeah. It's not like, congratulations, honey. It's like, what did you do? And it's just like, <laughs> But you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Edward Bosco. You almost said your own one. <laughs> I almost slipped. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you almost said the correct one. You almost yeah. did the right one. Fridays, MW Friday Night Flashbang, long form storytelling, really good, amazing editing, even though I will never admit it. I do a good job. They're yeah. also doing a signing tomorrow. And you can get prints over at streamly.com forward slash Edward Bosco. Be sure to check that link and buy a lot of them. I love signing things for people. Oh, why don't you tell them about the, uh, the new game that I did? Yeah, I don't know if it's safe to talk about that voice actor jail and all that. Uh huh. Sure, whatever you say, buddy. It's already out. Good try, though. Monty, where can they find you? Hi, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter, where I'm posting pictures of my miniature. I got an airbrush, and now I have been unleashed upon the world, and you cannot stop me. If you try, I will destroy you. Um, uh oh. <laughs> you can also find me posting random stupid things. My brain is dumb. Like rhubarb is just celery with sass, and like other garbage things like that. But um tomorrow maybe maybe not will be a stream i'm not sure i haven't got confirmation from my friend darcy we want to play uh little nightmares 2 so either we're going to be just playing it on our own you know privately or we will we will stream it it depends on how we feel um so there might be a stream tomorrow there might not be um, but if, if there isn't a stream tomorrow, then on Thursday, we'll be having more Legend of Zelda Ocarina of, of Time, where I'm a 
disgusting little goblin child running around and smacking trees with swords. It's great. Very nice. Hey, Sarah. You. Where do they also find you? Unexpectables this Wednesday. I always, I always forget. I this. am on Twitter. <laughs> Remember Unexpectables? At... Pepperidge Farm remembers. I know. <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Sarah with an H, Yang with an E, Willia. I'm. I have to go think about things. Yeah. So much thinking life. to do. Dark. Oh, Very dark. This, my old friend. And of course, you could find me at twitch.tv slash Arkov, also over on Twitter at Arkov, where tomorrow it's the Murder Cave. Grizzly Adams, myself, Shadow Dancer Bob, and Codename Chaz play the video games. Come check out what we'll be playing tomorrow. Also, been powering through some Halo. We're on to Halo 4, so it's taking all of my willpower right now to try to get through that with Colonel Sheru, the lovely Colonel Sheru, one of our mods. So come watch me get blown up, destroyed, and power through one of the worst bungee stories ever because it was 343 um but yeah that's uh that's what i'm up to also be sure to like share subscribe drop those bits and subs but most importantly we appreciate your time and we appreciate you popping by and telling me how wonderful my voice is and how much you appreciate how kind and nice that i am hi citric how you doing speaking of nice people connor where can they find you uh, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Double. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Tuesday is Tabletop Wargaming Day. We play a bunch of either Kill Team or Warhammer 40k 9th Edition or possibly some Age of Sigmar coming up. Uh, my buddy Luke is there. Sometimes we have other people showing up with their armies and we make it a 1v1v1 or perhaps even a 1v1v1v1. That'll be a lot of fun, be fun, be fun, be fun. Uh, you can also, you can also, uh, Friday is Friday Funhouse, where I play a lot of fun party games with my friends. Saturday, I play Yakuza Kiwami 2, I'm playing through the entire series. That's the one I'm at right now. That's a lot of fun. Uh, and Sundays, I'm either playing Half-Life Alex or I am playing games with the Harbingers, the community over at Dead House Sonata, and... If you haven't heard of Dead House Sonata by now, well, you clearly just tuned in. Why are you here? This is episode, like, 20-something. Yep. Go watch the other ones, where I also talk about Dead House Sonata, the six-player action RPG, where you can play as the dead to fight the living. And you can find all the information you could ever want to know at that link right there. Uh, got some fun stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, that's going to be very exciting. Uh, and you can purchase a Founders Pack at that link. I just posted. Also, be sure to check out my DMs Guild, where I have um, three subclasses out right now for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, but I also have a fourth one coming down the pipeline, the Passion Domain Cleric, and that will be available as soon as I get a hold of the art for it. Uh, and, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, Connor. Uh-huh. If somebody wanted to pair their Founders Pack with a nice gift for their significant other on Valentine's Day, what would you recommend? Well, I'd recommend uh, they they check out Dead House Sonata and then go promptly to DieHardDice.com. What? Yes, right. That's right. It is officially Valentine's Day now, so you can go go ahead and uh, Wait, click your way on over. For most people. I gotta eat my cinnamon hearts. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, no, it's not Valentine's Day for you. You have an hour, Monty. Oh, God damn it. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta cough them all back up now. No. Yeah, throw them back no. up, Monty. Put them back in your hand. Okay, fine. I'll put them back. Oh, Thank Jesus you. Christ. Thank that was you. Unnecessary. Continue, Connor. So you were saying about Die Hard Dice. DieHardDice.com. For all of your dice and dice accessories needs, uh, they have a bunch of beautiful, handcrafted, non-toxic materials. Uh, in their diehard dice, they either metal or polymer. Uh, fantastic, colorful creations. My, they have new ones specifically out for Valentine's Day right now. They have uh, a rose-colored plastic or polymer dice, and they have these amazing pink and black metal dice as well that look so good. I'm thinking about getting a bunch of D6s for my Emperor's Children Army, as a matter of fact. Uh... But they look fantastic. Uh, they feel awesome when you roll them. They also have carrying cases and dice trays, so you don't damage your dice and you don't damage the surfaces you roll them on. 
And you can get all that at dieharddice.com. And what's more, if you put in the coupon code expect feb at checkout you can get a whopping 10 percent off your entire order price uh amazing deals here from us at the unexpectables to you on dieharddice.com and some of that money gets thrown back to us so we can pay austin hell yeah thanks hey. austin we want austin I... to be fed because we want him to stay we do we, we need him. we need him to keep working so we have to keep him alive yeah uh, so how about some bits and subs? Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, Bella X Ash, thank you so much for the what? Oh my god. Hmm? What? I have to turn you it scared on. Scared me. You got loud suddenly, and I got scared. I have to. I have to turn it on. I have to do the announcer thing. <laughs> Bella X Ash with the tier one sub for nine months. We've got Captain Necros with a tier one sub nine months in a row. Dealing with some difficult days. Thank you guys for the entertainment. Uh, Paige, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. That's eight months in a row. We got the Turtle Squad, tier one, eight months. Eight months, Newt. Uh, we got Ferret07 with 420 bits. The illegal oh, no. trade of blood was our case. Damn you, Prince Division and Vice Squad. Uh, Viridian Winter with 1,000 bits. Monty, give that poor girl a vacation. She has an extra week off every Saturday now. We did. We totally did. I think, uh, talking, dude, I think they're talking about Lucy. <laughs> oh well we also lucy doesn't get a day off yeah no but we gave monty time off that's like giving lucy time off because it's an extra week yeah yeah uh we've got do the man with 100 bits if he started painting would he be edward boscott mm. zodiac pug thank you for the tier one sub with 11 months zen Lido with 300 bits happy chocolate sale eve everyone and we've got Burnout Vogan with 100 bits saying, I wasn't ready for this episode, but the role play was amazing and engaging. Thanks, everyone, for a lovely night. Check them out on Twitch.tv slash Burnout Vaughn. So, yeah, actually, I agree. Tonight's role play was, like, you guys fucking killed it. Like, Yeah, you guys were killing yeah, it. Kel's scene with, with his mother was hysterical because I love watching you be comedic. <laughs> and the mental breakdowns you had, Connor, throughout the course of the session were great. Tennis is so close. To just He's so close, it. but dude, you played him on the edge so <laughs> fucking well. Like, you killed it. Also, the Citric King would like to say, I will wrangle you with a towel and feed your broken remains to the wolves. That's rude. I don't know why you would say that. Wow, today. Citric, wow. Yeah. That's really... That's, that's really intense. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we need to find somebody to raid. Okay. True. Also, the chat is is mm. muted up here. Chell is, Chell is like, number of dead princes, one. Number yeah. of times Gibby has had sex, one. one. Coincidence? <laughs> ah. So, Monty, I see both uh, Thero and Draco with... I see Draco. Yeah. Uh, Draco's playing Don't Starve Together. I think we raided Thero. Oh, we, I think we raided him the last time we did Prince Division. Are you really going to pit my sex record against dead princes record? Because that we feels sure awful. are. I mean, there seems to be a correlation because every time Panic has sex, uh, Remy, Remy gets, gets fucked up. So maybe every time you have sex, a prince or princess dies. There oh, God. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> for, wow. This is for the good of the this is for the good of the city, Durs. For the good of the city, you need to stop both of you. <laughs> just, just next time, like Gibby hey, and wanna? Panic like, need to like, stop. Hey, Gibby, you want to? You want to? You know, Gibby's um, just like, can we just cuddle, uh, please? <laughs> looks <laughs> like someone wanna... wasn't being safe. Hey, have what you ever tried passionate hand, passionate <laughs> pants on hugging for the whole night? <laughs> and then Durs like, what did I do wrong? I'm a bad person. <laughs> Just for the good of the city, Durza. Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> fuck the city. I have money. Pee pee be gone. No, don't fuck the city. That's how we're just dying up. Oh! <laughs> anyway, I'm down with Draco. Okay, let's trade Draco. Yeah, let's what do it. What should our raid message be? Oh, don't starve together. Uh... Oh, boy. <laughs> Pants on hand holding. No. Uh, let's not do that. Yeah, let's not. Uh... Oh yeah, body has been discovered. Among Us reference. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! I feel like don't um, don't starve together. So, uh, feed the dragon. Feed the dragon. All right, we're gonna feed. Go. We had we had Ivan. That's appropriate. Feed there you the go. Dragon. Feed the dragon. I fed him information. Don't starve together. Eat together. Hold on. This I message write. brought to you by Pepper Trump. All right, Darko Draco one. Feed the Let's dragon. Feed the dragon. Feed the dragon. <sighs> Weeb the dragon. Weeb the dragon. 
Weave the magic dragon. He lives by the 